Jeremiah 1 and we'll start reading from verse 4 we're reading down to 12 Jeremiah chapter 1 4 to 12 then the word of the Lord came unto me saying before I formed thee in the womb I knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations and then Jeremiah replies then said I ah Lord God behold I cannot speak for I am a child verse 7 but the Lord said unto me saying say not I am a child for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee and whatsoever I command thee thou shalt speak he said be not afraid of their face for I am with thee to deliver thee said the Lord now this is the verse of emphasis 9 then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth and he said unto me behold I have put my words in your mouth verse 10 see I have this day listen this is God revealing to a man the possibilities that can become of his life if he dares to believe God how can God give such a prophetic word to a little child who just complained that his major problem was his inadequacy God acted as if he did not know the boy was talking about the limitation that his age had created for him he said see listen i have said this day i have said uh, i have this day said thee over the nations over the kingdoms to root out to pull down to destroy to throw down to build and to plant that is the prophetic word this is what i want to do with your life this is how far I want to do business with you verse 11 moreover in continuation he says the word of the Lord came unto me saying Jeremiah this is what I want to do with your life but what is your perception he says what seest thou I have shown you what I see about your life but what do you see and then Jeremiah said I see the rod of an almond tree then the next verse he says then said the Lord unto me thou hast what well seen please give us any other version NIV any other version he says thou hast well seen there's a version that says thou hast seen correctly I don't know exactly which of them but just just give us any other version that has a different rendition NIV says you have seen what you have seen Jeremiah this is your prophetic destiny regardless of your age and your background regardless of your limitations I have set you when he said this day not when you grow up in my mind this day I have set you over nations to root out pull down uproot build but then he says the only limitation to this prophecy coming to pass now is what you can see and then he says what seest thou he says i see the rod of an almond tree and then he says you have seen correctly on the strength of your correctness you have authorized me to watch to see that my word which you have seen and agreed with me must come to pass it says for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled please give us amplified amplified says for I am alert and active watching over my word to perform right it says I am alert and active watching over my word hallelujah he starts by revealing to jeremiah his prophetic destiny in christ 
Jeremiah begins to lament. Theologically speaking, Jeremiah is called the weeping prophet. The nature and the character of the anointing upon his life was such that he was always raising a lamentation. And that anointing altered his form to respond to the kind of message that he would communicate. It was a reflection of the burden that was upon him. So oftentimes you would hear him weeping as he communicated his thoughts from God. So Jeremiah as a little boy was being shown a great destiny who at that time never believed that it would come to pass and he began to complain. The same complaint happened with Moses in Exodus chapter 3. Don't turn there. The Bible says when God saw that he turned aside right to see the great sight, he said, Moses, take off your shoes for where you stand is holy ground. Are we together now? After he showed Moses everything, Moses started complaining and said, but Lord, you know I'm a stammerer. And then his unbelief grieved the heart of God. And God spoke fiercely to him. He said, who created the mouth? If I can show you, I can turn your rod to a serpent. If I can cause fire in a bush, yet not burnt. What does it take to heal you of stammering? It says, because you have limited me, I will use you to the degree you believe me. But since the issue of speaking, you did not believe me, I will raise Aaron to be a spokesman. It was never God's intention for Aaron to be Moses' spokesman. He was supposed to be healthy and healed. Are we together? His limitation affected the dimension to which God could find expression in him. Please pay attention to this. You see, every time God calls a man, God does not just begin to use the man because he's called. Because oftentimes, the vessel that God calls is either an unbeliever or having all kinds of thinkings and paradigms that are not consistent with God. You see that happen to all the patriarchs. Abraham, for a long time, when God began to speak to him about his child coming, Abraham for a long time, listen, he tried to agree, but the reality of his supposed impotency and Sarah's barrenness to a point where Sarah laughed. She laughed when the angel spoke and said she would be the mother of nations. God could not do so much with Abraham until one time God told Abraham, come out. When he came out, he said, try to count the stars. Abraham tried and tried and tried and finally he couldn't count it. He says, so shall thy seed be. And then the Bible says, finally, Abraham believed God. He agreed with God. Oh, now I understand what you are trying to tell me. And then the Bible says it was credited, reckoned unto him for righteousness. It is not just enough to know that God is mighty. Please listen. The dynamics of impact, the dynamics of doing great things for the kingdom does not just lie on the recognition that God is mighty. As great and mighty as God is, if that is the scope of your revelation about him, um, you will be blessed. It will impart reverence and awe, but you will not be able to do much. The idea of his revealing his might to you is so that it can get you to a point where you are convinced about anything he wants to do in and through your life. So that the revelation of his might will swallow away what you may hold to be limitations in your life. Here he meets Jeremiah and says, Jeremiah, I want to do business with you. And Jeremiah comes as a young boy says Lord I've heard about you doing great things with people and prophets now you are telling me I'm a prophet but I'm limited my background my ideologies are limiting me and God began to challenge his perception the series that we've been taking on the secrets of the kingdom are an attempt to reveal the working principles of the kingdom I call them secrets or mysteries. The very laws 
upon which impact in the kingdom is founded your ability to understand this thing and agree with God becomes your key to an enviable life of impact your inability to understand will limit God greatly in your life so please pay attention you see it is the word of God that transforms but I've shared it again and I'll keep drumming it until it becomes a persuasion there is a system through which the word transforms people the word does not transform people just by entering them and doing something magical. No, that's not how the word works. Write this word down, word, W-O-R-D. is the Greek word logos. And that word logos, it does not just mean the speakings of a man. Right? The, the root word that is translated logos is the word thoughts. Please write it down. Thoughts. Like thinking. Thoughts. Is the word idea. Write it down. Is the word opinion. Opinion. Is the word paradigm. Paradigm. And it is also the word mindset. So when we say the word of God, we are not just saying the things God is saying. No, we are saying the, the understandings that construct his mind. Are you following me now? When we say the word of God transforms, that word, word is not just the speakings of God, like his communication from his mouth to you. It means his ideas. It means his ideology. It means God's opinion about everything. Let me tell you how we are changed. When your life consistently keeps realigning to God's own idea about everything. Are we together? So you find out what God's perspective is about divine health. And about the reality of you staying healthy. And you compare that to your current state. They tell you you have SS. They tell you you have all kinds of sicknesses that destroy you. But you find out his word is a compendium of his perspective about you. And so he tells you, by his stripes, I am healed. I have been healed. If the spirit that raised Christ from the dead, right, dwells in your mortal body, the Bible says that same spirit will revitalize. Now that's his opinion. You can be aware of it and still remain sick. Or you can choose to subscribe to that new ideology and watch the word of God come to pass in your life. You see, God is alert, ensuring that all those who truly believe his word live with a testimony. It may take a while, brothers and sisters, but as surely as you correctly believe God, give him time. There must be a performance in your life. Say amen. I am amazed at how many believers think their lives will change just because they are born again. I am more amazed at the preachers that teach Christians every week that all it takes to triumphant success in the kingdom is just to surrender your heart to the Lord and go to bed. That looks very spiritual. It is very evangelical. But it's not the accurate presentation of God's thoughts as far as our success is concerned something in that equation is missing and this is why people get born again and they say i'm born again i'm a believer why are things not changing in my life everything i used to suffer before i'm still suffering them after and i'll tell you why because you see you receive salvation through faith 
an act of God's grace but there is a partnership with you to activate the realities the Bible says that we draw out of the wells of salvation everybody say wells not just one salvation as a package is broken down into different systems of possibilities your finances your health your life the operation of the spirit in your life your spiritual growth it is now left for you through the ministry of the holy spirit to walk with the word of god and change your mindset please hear me i am i am a firm believer that a believer who has refused renewal will experience the exact same thing with an unbeliever the only difference is the security of his eternal salvation but as far as the earth is concerned there will be no absolutely no difference as far as kingdom exploit is concerned are we together Nicodemus came to Jesus by night in John chapter 3 and he says rabbi we know that you are a man sent from God he said for no man can do these things except God be with him and then Jesus responds to Nicodemus in verse 3 of John 3 he says verily verily I say unto you he said except a man be born again he said he shall not he cannot see the kingdom he uses the word see the kingdom are we together verse 3 verse 4 Nicodemus responds and says, ah, how can a man now be born again when he is old will he enter a second time into his mother's womb then Jesus explains his concept verse 5 he says verily verily I say unto you except a man be born of water and the spirit then he switches terminologies he said he shall not enter it's one thing to see the kingdom but it's another thing to enter the experience of the kingdom I call it prophetic realities and experiential manifestations it is one thing to hold the prophetic word of God it is another thing to enter the experience of it between thus saith the Lord and it came to pass is a process that process is your degree of alignment please listen to what I'm teaching you this will hold the key out of every life of pain and shame and mediocrity hallelujah do you believe what I'm sharing with you today? I watch people very innocently well-meaning people live under the expectations of God and they are not doing anything about it some are waiting for God to do something about it so you hear people call and say man of God I don't know what is happening in my life I serve the Lord I go to church but nothing is happening and the biggest area largely is the area of finances nothing is changing is God so wicked no he's not there are systems in the kingdom everybody says systems it is for this reason that he gave unto some apostles listen he gave unto some prophets he gave unto some evangelists and pastors and teachers why for the equipping maturing perfecting building up of the saints so that the saints will not keep misunderstanding him God wants to be understood. There is something about the thinking of God that men do not understand. And so he anointed certain people and said, explain to people that I'm not the reason why their lives are that way. There is an understanding they do not have. Listen, he anointed some. He didn't anoint them to be noisemakers. He didn't anoint them to be offering razors. He didn't anoint them to just be jeep drivers. He anointed them for the maturing if you are in the fivefold ministry and you're not contributing to demystifying the kingdom you are wasting God's time on earth the role of the fivefold ministry is to present the kingdom make it clear let the inhabitants believers understand by the time they see the spiritual logic to God's system they will now say ah i see 
it's not that God is wicked. I never knew that there is a system like this. I never knew that godliness with contentment is great gain. I never knew that my not tithing is what is authorizing the devourer. I have prayed. I never knew that as powerful as prayer is, is not the only key to opening doors in the kingdom. So the fivefold ministry. By grace, it's not just about their spiritual life. There is an anointing that comes upon them and gives them an advantage. A superior working of the spirit in their life gives them uncommon understanding to the working knowledge of the kingdom. To the end that they will now call believers and say, guys, I found it. I think I've seen the reason why you are not anointed. Uh, it's not just about prayer and fasting. Your motif. And then the person says, really? I, I came from a background that is not so good and um, I'm naturally inclined to wanting power and wanting a, a sense of self-worth. And you say, no, I've studied the kingdom and I've found out that once your motive is to glorify yourself, you cannot have the anointing. Are you seeing now? The fivefold ministry, you have edified that person. So he goes back in prayer, scans his motive and says, Lord, I change my eyes my mindset i change my understanding it's no longer about being a celebrity it's about seeing your kingdom come at once he satisfies the condition for the power of god that same person will have a dramatic encounter and go for a meeting and suddenly begin to see the power of god because someone adjusted his mindset what you are receiving and what you receive every week it's not just impartations it's not just encounters but you are receiving realignments the answers to your questions are being dispensed are we together now to the end that you will now find out why certain things may not be working in your life now it's up to you to be malleable enough and say lord i am the porter I i'm the clay you are the porter mold me to whatever form you can argue and say no i don't agree with this and then continue suffering or you can say look i have i have found the truth and i will adjust i like i like um what's his name that short guy the tax collector zacchaeus when he climbed the tree he was a wicked man he defrauded people because of his office as a tax collector but his motive was sincere. Now he climbed the tree. I know why he was a wicked man. Because of his size. He probably felt that they were looking down on him. And so he had to amass wealth. To cover for something. So the issue was not finances. The issue was trying to cover for inferiority. Are we together? And he climbed the tree to see Jesus. And Jesus said don't climb. It's your house I'm going to. Jesus meets the man. And at once, he corrects Zacchaeus' mentality. He says, I didn't come to your house because you are rich. I didn't come to your house because you are tall. In other words, it's not about those things. It's about my love and my grace. You did not qualify, but I came to your house. And Zacchaeus said, that means there's no need defrauding people. At once, he changed his mindset. Are we together now? He started returning everything and said, ah, my amassing money was not because I like money. I was hoping that through it, I will look like royalty so that every celebrity will visit my house. Now Jesus has abused my mentality. And he says there's no need for that old thinking. We must be like Zacchaeus tonight. Opening up our hearts. And the moment the word of God comes, you don't argue with it. You see, only foolish people argue with the word of God. Especially when you are not getting results in your life. We live in a generation where people are confident to talk about things they know nothing about. Are we together? Someone who doesn't play football, you see him arguing for three hours. He says, I know how much, how we paid them this amount, meaning his team. And he never contributed anything. And he never wonders and says, come, why is my life not working like the person I'm talking about? People argue all around. Why should doctors go on strike? And the person is not even, a, he's not near medicine, he doesn't know anything. We like talking boldly about things we know nothing about. And that's the danger. We keep venting our ignorance. But when we come to God, 
he requires that we become silent. That's what Mary did. Martha was busy about commanding and talking and Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. You are trying to get things done, but one thing is needful. And this Mary has chosen to do what? To sit at the feet. There's something about being still in God's presence. When he was about to feed the 5,000, he said, let them sit down. If you can't sit down, there's no bread for you. Sitting down is a sign of stability. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Oh, but Joshua Selma, you, I have bills to pay tomorrow. Sit down in green pastures. Your running around is not the solution. Let me tell you something. When we go through things, we think God is disturbed the way we are disturbed. And we say, God, keep responding on the go. And God says, I'm not going to talk to you. Prove you trust me by sitting down. In five minutes, that sickness, you are trying to rush and call a doctor outside and God is saying, just sit down. I can address this issue. You can't even raise 3.5 million to go to India. So why don't you sit down and give me time and walk out of this meeting here? I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God. I respect the word of God. I will never argue with his perspectives. I'm not too proud to admit I am wrong. No, 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 no. Once the word of God challenges my ideologies, I say, Lord, I agree with you. You cannot be wrong. So I'm the one who is wrong here. Anyone who has that kind of spirit is on his way to an enviable destiny. Do you know how long it takes the average believer to adjust to the word of God? Until we exhaust all our options and we are convinced that there is no other way. Then we say, okay, Lord, what were you even saying? And God says, I've been talking for five years. When will you listen to me? Okay, Lord, I admit I'm 35 now. There's no husband. Oh, yeah, let me hear what you have to say. And God is saying, sit down. It's not by hopping up and down. There is a secret. You settle down for six months and enter your marital life. You would have entered it five years ago if you paid attention. The day you listen to God, that becomes your this day. Your this day can be any day. He says, there remaineth a rest for the people of God. He said, today, if you will hear his voice. Let me tell you something. Time never changes anything. Time only reveals. The day you align to the word of God, that's the day your change starts. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, you're about to speak to me. I'm not rebellious. My heart is open. Go ahead and pray inside and outside. The online community, open your heart and let's pray. Shiba Kato Saba. Shiba Kurato Sapre Teketi Baladaba. Mambros Kalabri de Shikrea Suparato Sabrati Alabadadi. Thy word is a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my path. Sing it one more time. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my heart. Hallelujah. Aside from my personal encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and the privilege that God has given me to understand and know the person of the Holy Spirit. The next, I would say, biggest gift that God has given me is an understanding of the systems of the kingdom. An understanding of the operation of the kingdom. How the kingdom works. The grace for performance that is on the strength of knowledge. Not just jacking yourself and say it will happen and mocking yourself. Understanding that produces consistent results. And there are so many of them. We've shared a lot of them in this house. But in this series, 
I took six of them. Six irrefutable laws of the kingdom. That when you walk with, please hear me, when you walk and live by these truths, when you allow the word of God to superimpose your thinking and it becomes your conviction and you are diligent to act, I promise you, there will be a performance. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 says, And it shall come to pass in that day that if you diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I commanded this day, not choose the ones you like, to do and observe, keep, live by all these laws that I give unto you. Right? It says that you shall be exalted above all the nations and all these blessings shall come to you and overtake you. Then he begins to tell you, you will be blessed in the city. You will be blessed in the country and all of that, all those blessings. But they are tied to your obedience. They are tied to faith. They are tied to your response, which is a product of your conviction. When you don't believe a thing, you cannot live by it. You cannot act upon it. And so we took some laws. The first was the law of encounter. And we spoke about complete surrender. That was the first discussion. That complete surrender is the law that governs the manifestation of the hand of God upon a man. That every time you see a man, a woman, a man of God, walking in unusual strange dimensions of graces the issue is not criticizing them the issue is not joining all those band of noisemakers calling everybody around town fake there are people who have this understanding the moment they see things they do not understand they see certain superior levels of graces they begin to criticize it once it is outside of their frame of belief how can a woman 35 years barren be pregnant? You see that? And they come up with, you would, you would think such a great testimony like this will be received by everybody until you discuss it among critics. They'll say, where is the woman? Bring her. Let's see her and the baby. And let's have a doctor certify that it was 35 years. As if the man forgot when he married his wife. You see how people think. So every time people see unusual levels of grace, they usually will try to find explanations to discredit that it's not as powerful as that. But the key is complete surrender. Never forget this. Forget about great levels of the anointing. When you are still conscious of yourself, your reputation, your anointing, your sermon, the quality of your revelations you will never touch the anointing that way are we together god will only truly anoint men who become reflectors men who have paid the price to be his image bearers they are reflectors of him not themselves a man of god who wants power to build a ministry and prove to people he's anointed will keep sweeping empty grounds and, and 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 keep preaching to empty pews for the rest of his life because god is not interested in men making a name for themselves the name they make is his reward by uh his reward for them being reflectors of him hallelujah i have seen a lot of preachers come to me and every time they come, their first question is, what is the secret to the anointing? And they think it's just some magic formula. I'll say this and that and that. Eat bitter leaf for one week. Add cabbage. After that, pray. Just put cross on your head for three days and get into power. That's charm. That's, that's not the way it works. It's not a charm you put in your pocket and then you just hide it in your suit. No, those who use that know what they're doing. But those who, you see, true power in the kingdom is a product of relationship. It's a product of relationship. You cannot receive from a God you do not know. You can receive from a herbalist you do not know. You can receive from a native doctor you do not know. You don't even have to know them. But if you want to receive from God, the first assignment is not your hand, it's your heart. My son, give me your heart. 
so we discuss that complete surrender as a key to unusual grace number two was a revelation that realities are only our physical reality is a reflection of a reality greater listen to this the bible says for as he thinketh in his heart his mind so he is i told you this law it is the law that births realities in our world that your physical life is only a looking glass are we together the quality of your life spiritually and otherwise is a reflection of something happening inside your life is not authorized to change until your mind changes Anything that is not a reality in your mind cannot be a reality in your life. Genesis 11, God came and saw Nimrod, the son of Cush, mobilized certain people and said, Go to come, let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves. The Bible says they burnt mortar and slime and bricks and started building. And then the Bible says God came to look down and see the building which the son of man had built. God said as far as he was concerned, they had finished the building because they had conceived it as a possibility right here. Your life will never change until your mind changes. Let me tell you the danger of trying to change things physically without changing it in your mind. If one million naira enters your hand and there is a poverty mentality in you, that mentality will adjust your behavior to force that money to leave you. And until it leaves you and you become poor, then your mind will interpret it as you being normal. Your mind will interpret wealth as being abnormal because it's not consistent with your beliefs. Are we together? Yeah. So you must make sure that transformation happens first within. You don't change people by just trying to change their physical environment. I gave an illustration one time when I was speaking about transformation. Have you dashed somebody a shirt or a trouser that you used for three years? It's still looking brand new because your mindset made you care for it. You always ironed it. You dashed the person the clothes and in two weeks, a shirt that was white has become brown. The person's mind is showing on the shirt. Are we together now? Yes. You give that person a shirt. Or ordinarily you wear it for two days and wash it or one day and wash it but this guy has worn it for two weeks why because in his mindset he says it is not necessary neatness is unnecessary it's only um, an emergency and once i am not sick there is no reason why i should be neat that's what his mindset is telling him so he wears the shirt for two weeks until everything tears and then he throws it away if the shirt has love written on it, you see that the O has faded or disappeared. Two weeks. It's the same thing that will happen to a corporation when you take the security man and make him the MD and make the MD a security man. You know, most people see wealthy people, for instance, and say, how can we be walking? We are the ones sweeping, opening gates. There is a wicked man sitting under AC just signing papers. And his salary is 10 million. And we are here receiving 15,000. No, it's not the suit. It's not the AC. It's the mindset. If you want to know, switch them. Take the security man and keep him on that seat. Let me tell you what he will do. We've discussed it, right? He will still stabilize us. He will drink what is in the fridge. Because his mindset does not teach him that he has capacity to reproduce it. Careful. Hallelujah. That's alright. Let me have your attention. So, with that kind of thinking, look up please. With that kind of thinking and that kind of faulty understanding, what happens to the person? You know, so, it has to be in your life as it is in your mind. People try to change their physical environment. We use all kinds of things to change our mindsets. So, somebody can wear a suit and feel like a CEO, but there's, there's nothing CEO there. You see, so there's nothing to deliver. You can carry complimentary cards and move around and they say, who are you? You say, my name is this and that. I am the CEO. What is your value? I don't understand what you're saying. Because for you to be a CEO, there's something you should have gotten. You ignored it and thought it was all suits. How we fool ourselves. We hate adjusting our minds. But we love trying to fake it in the physical. 
and Nigerians can fake things. We can fake wealth. You can fake as you people act as if they eat fried chicken and, and this every time. Whereas in their mindset, they are living in abject poverty and they will not make adjustment. And sometimes pastors, in a bid to encourage people, this is what we tell people: act like your future. And what what I understand what we mean. We mean change your mindset. But someone now says, Okay, I'm hearing act like your future. And hot son, the person wears suit and tie and is moving. Say, I am a CEO. He carries a bag and he thinks I'm acting like my future and he mocks himself for 10 years. Whereas the first way to act like your future is to think like your future. You must think like your future to become like the future. So the issue is not going to borrow money and now start buying shoes of 10,000 and 15,000 when you cannot afford food of 200 naira. The idea is not to create a fake outer environment. The idea is to begin to give your mindset new informations. And inevitably, trust me, trust me people, I know what I'm telling you. Inevitably, your physical environment will become a reflection of your mindset. Our physical environment is only a mirror. Have you seen someone stand before a mirror? Assuming I stand before a mirror and maybe there's something um, on my head or on my shoulder and I'm trying to remove it, will I put my hand inside the mirror to change it? I adjust it here and the man in the mirror adjusts. The man in the mirror is this physical you. The real you is the person within. If that adjustment does not happen, forget about trying to create change. That's why people create temporal changes. And then their mindset superimpose it. Are we together? So, I try to act as if I'm a Christian. I'm not serious about God and I'm not serious about the world. But simply because I want to enter a relationship with a lady who comes for koinonia. And she has told me if I don't come for koinonia, no relationship. I come and I fake it. Are we together? While they are singing, I watch people raise their hands. I'm not raising it out of conviction. I don't even know what is happening. And after five minutes, I say, my dear, I'm leaving this place. Because my reality tells me you are supposed to be drinking by eight o'clock. You don't worship God by eight o'clock. And you have programmed your mind to always drink by evening. While worship is going, you are just remembering that somebody can buy it free. I don't have money, but somebody will buy the beer free. But you are in church just by force. It's the same thing pastors try to do to people. Be nice. Don't be bad. Why are you a bad girl? Change. If she could change, she would not be that way. There is an understanding. The key is not to tell people to change. The key is to show them how to change. Hallelujah. As it is within you, so will it be in your life. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, it says, for out of it are the issues of life. Guard your heart. Don't allow any kind of thing enter your mind. Let me tell you why many of us are confused. We are confused because the informations we allow into our spirits are not constructive. You finish listening to a worship song right now. Two hours of strong worship. Are we together? The moment you finish, you have the selection. You have gospel songs. You have uh, all, all the others, you know, songs like that. Well selected. So when you want to feel spiritual, you finish listening to the gospel songs. And then you announce a kite. Enough of church, I beg. Let me just hype myself and enjoy. And now you put another thing. You are, you are diluting what you spend time you finish listening to the word of God and all of a sudden you just put a pornographic movie and you are watching and you are happy and you are laughing. At the end of it, you prayed for two hours but right now, you don't even know what your mind is thinking again. You, 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 the goal was for your mind to think creatively but all through your mind is thinking about something you are trying to fight because you are feeding it. Are we together? You are feeding it. You go and sit down in the midst of people who are always gossiping. You sit from 10 o'clock till 2, talking about people, tearing down people. And afterwards, you go back 
and you are surprised that that is your entire thinking you have to protect your heart build a wall around your heart don't allow just anything find expression no no there are things i will never be found associating with not be i don't care whether they are good or bad honestly i am on a project i am well aware of how much my life would have changed if i were more renewed than i am now and i'm on a consistent project to renewing myself i'm not ready to sabotage that effort through carelessness are we together now please be careful what you allow in your mind you allow people keep talking to you you sit down and talk about somebody who became a millionaire in four months and say four months millionaire there are thieves in nigeria I saw one he's my neighbor let me i'm just waiting for that guy and you sit down let me tell you what you are doing you are associating wealth with negativism your mind cannot agree that you will be blessed because you have already castigated somebody and you have put a benchmark on yourself to never be wealthy so somebody becomes a millionaire in four months instead of you to find out what kingdom principle did he did he practice what sacrifice what happened no we don't argue we say no way it took me 20 years your father will tell you or your mother will tell you to buy my first golf how can a young man become a millionaire in one month 20 years one uh, four months it took you 20 years because of what your knowledge could deliver that's how long it took you to be in the labor room 20 years are we together there are different ways to get to lagos you can trek you can ride a bike are we together you can follow a luxurious bus you can have your private car you can fly you can take a private charter you can have your own jet you will arrive in different conditions don't don't ever make a mistake that you will arrive with the same condition no that guy who trekked from when buhari won that gentleman they they appreciated him but have did you see the guy that's how life is with many people we use all kinds of formulas that we think will take us to the place of destiny and when we find people applying superior kingdom principles rather than finding out we argue and we say no this is the only way i know that means that's the only way there is tell somebody there is another way hallelujah say there is another way please give us first corinthians chapter 12 the last verse first corinthians 12 the last verse hallelujah hallelujah god is changing us first corinthians 12 the last verse please everybody read it says but covet earnestly the best gifts uh-huh read on and yet i show unto you a more excellent way say there is a more excellent way the fact that you are doing it the way you know to do brothers and sisters hear me does not mean that is the only way you can do ministry the way you were taught in the seminary in bible school but that does not mean that is the ultimate way there is a more excellent way are we together you can manage your family the way you know you can try to know god the way you have been taught but there is a more excellent way and that's the way that the lord is teaching us that it is not all up to God and it is not all up to you it will always take partnership because the kingdom of God is made of systems and every system defines the operation of God in a particular way there is the administrative and governmental system of the kingdom there is the economic system of the kingdom are we together now there is the family system of the kingdom the area i was teaching the school of ministry students yesterday and fortunately we are, we are studying the course ministry and while i was teaching them i taught them something i told them i said when the devil comes to your life he finds out which operation of the system you do not understand that becomes his entrance point in your life so if satan comes to your life and finds out that you are a prayerful person he will not start his attack that way he finds out that you don't have a problem fasting and praying and studying the word you have already understood the relevance yet you are not an excellent person he uses your laps 
of lack of excellence as the access point to your life. Are we together now? Jesus said this, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything. Satan tried to access the life of Jesus through different systems. At first, he tried to terminate him at birth. It didn't happen. He refrained himself. Waited for Jesus when he was tired. He now came trying to use hunger. Turn these stones into bread. It didn't work. He tried to use pride and ego. Are you not the son of God? He shall put his angels charge over you. Even try to use spirituality. Jesus defeated him. And the Bible says he left him for a season. Watch this. He now tried to come through Peter. Are we together? To prohibit Jesus from talking about his death and resurrection. Jesus detected it and rebuked him. Finally, he came through Judas. And he was allowed. So that scriptures will be fulfilled. Not because Jesus did not know. The Bible says, after they took the communion, Satan entered Judas. And he went. And caused, made the arrangement for them to kill Jesus Christ. The systems of the kingdom. The area you do not know is the area the devil will defeat you in. And so I'm opening us up to the multifaceted dimensions of the systems of the kingdom. To the end that we will be fortified. Not just spiritually. Not just financially. Not just maritally. There will be complete and balanced growth. Number three. I shared with us last week on how to receive direction and divine strategies. There is an operation of the kingdom that is responsible for helping men surmount mountains in their lives. And it's found in Proverbs chapter 3 when you read from verse 5 to 7. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. The next verse says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. And there's a promise tied to it. It said, if you acknowledge him, he shall direct your path. Right? Then you read verse 7. It says, be not wise in your own understanding. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. But the verse of emphasis is verse 6. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and she shall direct your path. That every time you are confused in your life, which is normal for men. We are human beings. We do not have all the knowledge. There are times you will be faced with mountains that are bigger than you. Listen to me, please. There are times you will be faced with all kinds of mountains. Financial mountains, marital mountains, educational mountains, career mountains, spiritual mountains, health mountains. There are all kinds of mountains before you. And Jesus is teaching us how to surmount those mountains. He says, every time you get to a point where you are in a crossroad, you are confused, you don't know what to do. He says, forget about the object of your worry and begin to acknowledge him. Flaunt his majesty, remind him of the things he has done before and he's authorized to create a pathway. Number four, the law of mastery and competence. This is an operation of the kingdom that is responsible for producing greatness and rewards. The kingdom operates on a reward system. This is one of the fundamental laws of wealth, one of the fundamental laws of relevance, one of the fundamental laws of influence, one of the fundamental laws of greatness, the law of competence. Proverbs 18, 16, it says the gift of a man. I told you to write many things as similes of that word gift the value of a man the contributions of a man are we together the abilities of a man when well refined developed and deployed will make room for him will make room for him regardless of your background koinonia regardless of what you know and what you do not know when you find your giftings the abilities that God deposited in you and you pay the price to refine them, they will bring you all kinds of rewards. Tangible rewards. What are tangible rewards? Money and all the physical privileges that come. And intangible rewards. The sense of fulfillment and satisfaction that comes knowing that you are revealing the glory of God and that you are using your gifts to serve humanity. It brings fulfillment. 
but it happens only at the mercy of competence i'm building from tonight right here when a man finds his god-given ability koinonia please listen to me i plead with you in the name of the lord jesus christ pay attention when a man finds his god-given ability he has found his way out of mediocrity he has found his way out of failure he has found his way out of pain and tears but your gift in itself although it came from god it always comes as a seed it always comes unrefined listen to me it will take that gift passing through a process of refining of development are we together now and of of mastery in dispensing it to be paid for and to be received and rewarded for nobody is going to bless you just because you think you have been having dreams that god is calling you to be a chef or to be a caterer have you mastered the cooking to an extent that a governor can call you or call your catering company this is the area i have problems with men of god because we never challenge people to be at their best they just bring little prophets offering for us and we prophesy and we lie to them because we know that their gifts the way it is someone comes to meet you and says i want to have a, a construction company how many years experience do you have nothing do you have a very credible engineer no you are the one who is the ceo of the company what did you study you studied fashion how does fashion relate with building stadiums and building bridges you are an entrepreneur do you have the required engineers no but he's my tribe man and they now bring one million for the man of god and the man of god said go it is done i told you last week it's not done don't let anybody fool you like that favor is when preparedness meets opportunity favor hear me is when preparedness meets opportunity you want a job but please and please before i prophesy to you have you done your homework are we together now you are trusting god for a job somewhere before i speak to you have you learned people skills have you mastered your art do you know your onions can you deliver competently don't come and ask me to prophesy into your life when you cannot you have not done your homework it's a mockery on god so god gives you an opportunity you have not mastered your cooking and they now tell you cook for 300 people the name of your company is goodness catering services that it has a spiritual name has nothing to do with the fact that good results will be delivered you now cook food for the 300 people and you make the person who recommended you to look stupid he did something to you as a favor because you are his church member but on your part you could not deliver before you start crying for favor make sure you have something in your hand well enough to deliver father give me a good husband have you mastered the art of being a good wife when was the last book you read and when was the last time you read it are we together oh god give me children what have you studied about parenting or you are just concentrating on trying to make sure your wife takes in have you studied on parenting you see many times let me tell you something get my teaching activating seasons of favor the lord taught me never to pray necessarily for opportunities because time and chance opportunities and seasons happen to them all one day like the hand of a clock your turn will come it must come but the key is to prepare so that the day you enter the presence of greatness you will never have to return again say amen competence i like you to say after me in the name of jesus i am gifted oh come on koinonia chorus it in the name of jesus i am gifted i am anointed the ability of the spirit is at work in me 
and I cooperate with God by refining those gifts knowing this that a day of favor must come to me and I do not want to abuse that day one day in the life of any man listen one day in the life of any man you will be seated before your destiny helpers it's up to you to deliver to the latter are we together i dread any time in my life when i will stand in the presence of greatness and would not have built capacity that is sufficient enough to open for me a door i dread the time when koinonia will be hundred thousand members and yet i do not have the leadership capacity to manage those crowds do you think god will give you there are certain people god pegs them at a level because that's the only level that will make them relevant and yet spiritual anything outside that is beyond their ability to manage there are people who can only manage anything less than one million they have not trained their minds and their lives to be able to manage those kinds of resources. God will not give you 100 million. If you saw it in a dream, wake up. It's a dream. You, it, it is your capacity that will make it happen in your life. I, Daniel, understood by books. You must buy the truth and sell it not. Refine your gifts. Refine your gifts. Refine your gifts. Write it down refine your gifts don't just identify them refine them they are the keys they are your bailout they are your bailout the concept of something for nothing is wickedness hello koinonia listen to me the concept of something for nothing is wickedness everybody rises according to their contribution our rewards in life will always be in direct measure to our contribution to want to become a millionaire giving the contributions of a pauper is wickedness that's why thieves are called thieves that's why we arrest them when we find them why because they use guns they don't contribute anything yet they want your money are we together so they bully you they say your money or your life bill gates is the way he is today because we can see his contribution you know why we insult politicians and we call them wicked they get their money by corruption we cannot see the value commensurate to what they have we see a man who is a local government chairman we do not see any developmental strides we don't see any entrepreneurial acumen yet we see billions in his account we know that that is questionable this is the basis upon which people are accused you don't accuse a man when you can see the value he's providing if i can provide the value of a billionaire you should not have a problem with billions in my account are we together now yes the question i want to ask you is that seat of greatness you want present to me the value that you are offering that authorizes you to sit there nothing for many of us are we seeing now a woman once asked me to pray for her i think she owned a school and she said things were not working the students were leaving and she said a prophet came around to pray he fed son he prayed and told her there's something somebody in another school one other mama that had his neighboring school that she came and buried a uh, charm in in the, the madam's own school so that she would not prosper when the woman told me that thing i said madam i minister deliverance to people but i can tell you this is nonsense that prophet that uh, the, the 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 prophet man i may not call him fake but i know that he's not seen clearly because most people use wizardry and wizardry peeps it's in the bible he said we are not like wizards right that peep they peep into the realm of the spirit there is no accurate knowledge they summon strange spirits to deliver information for them which can be aberrated so he comes and the woman thinks the only reason why her school is not growing well why should i send my child to her school your school uniform alone depicts non-excellence you don't know that colors are communicators
check shirt, check, check, short knicker. That's a school uniform. For instance, and then you put red or blue socks, carelessly done, with one tailor who is not competent, but is a brother to the principal. And so you allow the person to sew anything. You see someone very tall and his, 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 his trouser is, is just at, around his lap. No excellence. What of the teachers? The te I'm, not, I'm not being insulted, but the teachers themselves, look at the result of the person teaching them accounting. F9 in accounting, F9 in math, F9 in economics, F9 in commerce. He's the chief, he's even the head of department of maybe social sciences. Why? Because they attend the same church. I'm telling you why people fail. There is a place for the spiritual. But never think incompetence will be substituted for, um, or competence will be substituted for, for prayer. Now it is that kind of school. You finish everything. The name is not good. There is no intelligent PTA uh, parents teacher forum. They are always fighting. You are increasing the school fees every term, every session. But there is no commensurate development. You write YX, 60 people write junior YX, only five have up to five credits. The students are not so dull. The teachers don't understand what they are doing. It is that kind of school. You write in miracle service and drop it and bring a seed and say, Lord, that school must change. And every time you pray, God tells you, go and meet somebody who has the best school in a city. Usually those kinds of people, they fight those who are doing well. Because they think they are colleagues. We all have schools. What is, what is the name of your own? You are not delivering. Let me tell you what keeps people incompetent. Don't think because you are doing the same thing another person is doing. That that means you are colleagues. Are we together? Yes. There are men of God I see, I know, I honor them with my life. I know that we are all men of God. But I know there are levels and there are standards. I will not sit down and say, oh, this... No, 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 no. Everybody is clapping for Joshua Selman. The same way they are clapping for me, I'm clapping for others too. Are we together now? But this colleague mentality is what keeps people incompetent. You have a supermarket. It brings you one million per day. You have a small kiosk. It brings you maybe 15,000 per day. You now sit down together. We are all wearing suits. We are colleagues. Are you doing the same thing? No. Are you getting the same result? No. But in our arrogance, we say, we the entrepreneurs. This guy has a kiosk. This guy has a shopping mall. But that humility to learn. There is a saying in Hausa that the person who can ask for road will never get missing. The, the keys to make us competent are there. It just takes meekness. But many of us are too embarrassed to improve. We are too ashamed to seek knowledge. Especially because that knowledge we want may come from those who are younger than us, less privileged than us, so we don't submit ourselves to listen. I've been in ministry for 10 years. It's not working. But you say we are still ministry. We are part of PFN. We are part of CAN. A young man comes and in three years he's doing remarkable things. I said, forget about all those small children. He's young. That's why he's attracting his age mates. Have your age mates died? Why don't you attract them? excuses that are reflectors of our our lack of desire to move forward i made up my mind it's a vow i have made with destiny that in every area where the lord wants me to excel i will master it and i will lead the field in the name of jesus christ if you are a preacher here, I'm speaking to you. Don't join people when they are clapping for you and saying, Joshua Selman, you are the lion of the tribe of Judah. They are destroying you. Thank God for their applause. But go back and say, it's time to walk. Be committed to personal development. You are a businessman. You hit your first million. You don't cross your leg and say, my soul, find rest. No. You say, the journey is just about to start. Thank God for all those things. But I need to learn. Who needs to mentor me? Who needs to build me? Champions are champions because they keep moving. Mediocres are mediocres because they stop moving. Give yourself to continuous improvement. Continuous development. Number five. 
the fifth law in the kingdom is the ministry of destiny helpers <laughs> ay, 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 ay. may God bring a helper to your life Mark chapter 2 verse 1 to 5 please media help us Mark 2 1 to 5 I'm teaching you the fifth law that is responsible for producing champions giants in the kingdom will you open up the gates hey, open up the doors will you open up the gates Again, he entered into Capernaum. Please, let's read this down to verse 5. After some days, and it was noised abroad that he was in the house. This is Jesus now. And straightway, many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Now something remarkable happens, verse 3. And they came unto him. You, isn't it interesting that the Bible hardly mentions the names of destiny helpers? It just says, they, certain men, a certain man, never mentions their names, but mentions what they did. Let me tell you something. Destiny helpers do not even know they are destiny helpers. It says, bringing one who was sick of palsy, which was born of four that means four people carried him four destiny helpers carrying a man it says and when they could not come nigh unto him for the press what did they do they uncovered the roof where he was jesus now and when they had broken it up they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay verse 5 when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. When you read on, he was eventually healed. Watch this. Write this down. Destiny helpers are people who have been anointed, assigned, and commissioned to bless you and to take you to the next level of your destiny. Anointed assigned by God commission when Elijah was about to die of hunger in Brook Cherith the Holy Ghost spoke to him and said go to a city called Zarephath he said dear I have commanded a widow the widow never act, she never acted like she was commanded but God told the prophet I have commanded I have compelled her spirit to respond to you listen no matter how hard working you are no matter how competent you are in the dealings of God with men, a time must come in your life when someone else will have to lift you. Please come, Shadrach. Shadrach is right at this level. Everybody, please see. Watch this. Call this a level in life. I am up here standing. His desire is to come up here. Now, he has done well, he's played his part well suited. But he has the gift, the grace, the anointing, but no access. Are we together now? He needs an introduction of a personality or certain personalities in his life called destiny helpers. Listen to me. The assignment of a destiny helper is to take you from where you are to the next phase of your life. Please, I want you to listen. Because some of us are at this level right now. The truth is you have refined your gift. The truth is you are competent. But you are saying, Lord, where is that man? Where is that woman who must speak? There are three kinds of destiny helpers. Please write this quickly. Three kinds of destiny helpers. Sorry, Shadrach, you have to stand. Okay, go ahead. Just, just write. Number one. 
the first kinds of destiny helpers are called divine connectors divine connectors second kings chapter 5 divine connectors please give us from verse 1 to 5 second kings 5 from verse 1 to 5 learn this what i'm teaching you is not basic at all it's not simple at all it's a deep mystery in the kingdom that produces giants the first kind of destiny helpers are called divine connectors who are they let me tell you who they are they are men and women who do not have the physical capacity to lift you but they can they have access they can point you to those who can lift you they do not have the anointing to heal you but they can take you to a church where you will be healed they do not have money to give you but they can take you to somebody who can help you they are called divine connectors their assignment is to connect you they don't have the power in themselves to help you are we together but they have access to an information that you need here is a situation a great man called naaman the bible says he was the captain of the host of the king of syria listen it says he was a great man with his master an honorable man because by him the lord had given deliverance to syria he says he was also a mighty man in valor but there was an area in his life lacking he was blessed spiritually blessed maritally but financially something was still hanging are we together he had excelled in every area but certain areas were still hanging and a miracle is about to happen to him verse 2 and the syrians had gone out by companies and had brought listen away captive out of the land of israel who a little maid you see no name again no name take note of this little girl because she's about to be a destiny connector it says a little maid and she waited upon naman's wife she was a pa to the big man's wife one day something happened next verse she said unto her mistress would god my lord with the prophet that is in samaria for he would recover him of his leprosy that's a destiny connector the little girl said i know i'm a i'm a captive but while i was in israel there is a man i know that that man is powerful i pray that my being little will not make you to not listen if you can please talk to your husband that he should go to that prophet i know he will be healed these are destiny connectors sam i know you have this talent but i was browsing and i saw that there is an international music auditioning i'm not a musician but i thought the information may be important for you certain men destiny connectors are we together now this lady had no power to heal the man but she knew a prophet Kai, who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody around your life that you have ignored there is someone who knows who will bless you but you have ignored them because they do not have capacity in themselves to help you let's run through this very quickly and one went in and told his lord saying Thus and thus said the maid that is in the land there of verse 5. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go and I will send a letter. So on and so forth and all of that. And when you read down to verse 10, Naaman, on account of, in fact, no, 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 let, let's go to verse, let's go to verse 8. Can we go to verse 8? There's something I want to point out there. Listen. And it was so, when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes because the king was afraid right and then elisha said let him come now and see whether and he shall know that there is a prophet in israel read on and so on and so forth elisha came go to verse 12. listen look at this he had told him to go and bath in the river of jordan now historically speaking jordan at the time this man was given an instruction was not clean very dirty are we together so the man felt at my status to go and bath watch this he says are not all of these rivers you know better and all of that so he returned and went away in rage 
this is where I'm trying to go. He was at the point of his breakthrough, but in anger, he was about to miss his miracle. The destiny helper comes again. And, the, and his servants came near and spake to him, listen, and said, my father, if the prophet had bid thee to do something worse, will you not do it? Somebody came and spoke to him. Are we together again? And said, no, no, let me encourage you. And that man went to bath. When you read 14 and 15, he bathed seven times. And his skin, the Bible records, was like that of a child, that of a baby. Destiny connectors. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. That God will give you the sensitivity to see that men may be ordinary, but they carry extraordinary things. Are we together now? They may be your younger ones. They may be children. They may not have the ability to bless you, but I pray that you have the discernment to listen to them when they speak to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The second kinds of destiny helpers are called men of influence. The second category of destiny helpers are called men of influence. Mark chapter 15 verse 43. Please give it to us very fast. Let's, let's be fast about it. Mark 15 verse 43. It says, Joseph of Arimathea, this was Jesus Christ now. Right? We, we shared a bit of this during our prayer and fasting. I'm reiterating it for, so that we can believe. Josh, um, Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor. The Bible says, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and used his honor or influence. He went boldly before Pilate and prayed for the body of Jesus. Listen, there are men in your life who can use their influence to open doors for you and to endorse you before great men. You need them. A time must come in your life where you will need them. Are we together? Do you know that? Please come. Assuming this lady is looking for a job. Are we together? This lady is looking for a job. She's tried and tried. But the privilege God has given me to lead this ministry. We have very influential people scattered around who honor the grace of God in my life and I appreciate it. I can use my influence. Are we together? And meet somebody. Someone like our daddy prof and say, daddy, please. There is a lady here, honestly. She can be good for a secretary. I endorse this lady. I know that this lady is good. Daddy, please, do you have any friend that can give her a job? Do you know he may not have planned blessing her? But because my influence is a middleman between two of them, he's compelled by his honor for me to do something about her situation. And this girl will get a job. Are we together? God bless you. There are men of influence. Those who preach and say you should not mind men of influence. Let me tell you what they are telling you. Remain where you are forever. Because it will take a Joseph of Arimathea to speak to the king for you. Men of influence. Men of influence. I've shared the story here in Koinonia. True story. That a, a guy who wanted to go to NDA. But there was a height level that he needed to, to, to get to. And he was short of it. Maybe by a few inches. And they were about to deny him. That opportunity. And somebody who had connection to the Emir of Zazel here. The Emir of, 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 of Zaria and all of that. Um, came and met the gentleman. And they wrote a letter. No, he didn't even write a letter. He said they should go and tell the commandant of NDA that the Emir of Zazel has added his height. Come on now. That's called influence. If the commandant does not act, he knows what that means. <laughs> to his daily bread, to his career. Are we together? Look, let me tell you, influence is a force that moves men to their destiny. Don't you ever make anyone make you criticize influential people. I pray for them in my life. I want them in my life. I desire them in my life. One of the priceless things I learned about my father. My father is connected to men of influence almost everywhere. If it's police station, my father knows somebody in the police station. Prisons, my father knows someone. If your car breaks down, no matter the brand, there is a mechanic somewhere my father knows. 
It's an attribute in his life I covet earnestly. Are we together? Who do you know, brothers and sisters, that can bail you out of this wicked Nigeria? You can buy land as a born again believer and somebody can just come as a politician to bully you. May God raise a man of influence to call him and say, if you touch my pastor, I touch your job. Influence. You need influence in this life. You see, the people in the world are smarter than believers. We sit down and keep praying in tongues and we fool ourselves. You need influence. Bishop Oyedeko is great today. I know he's great as an anointed man. But it's not just because he's an anointed man. He's a pastor of influential people. Are we together? If the managers of five banks are members of your church, are we together? Your chief financial secretary is the, is the, is the CEO of Zenith Bank. Will you be poor as a church? Please answer me. Will you be poor as a church? Don't say it does not matter. Keep fooling yourself. It matters big time in this country we live in. You need men of influence. Many of our parents ignore them. That's why they are suffering. May God make you a destiny helper to someone. That one letter from you to say, no, no, I know this person. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want God to make me a man of influence. I am very unapologetic about it. I want God to connect me to politicians, to connect me to business people, to connect me to diplomats. I'm not part of those liars in church who will say it doesn't matter. I'm just a righteous man. I have fortified myself. I will still be holy with them and I will take advantage of the influence for the kingdom. Hallelujah. When the former president, I heard a very funny story. I will only say part of it. The former president uh, of Nigeria did something funny to one prominent um, will I call him father elder statesman in Nigeria he did something funny to him and um, within three days he received a call from about five presidents this is verified they all called him and said what are you doing we heard you did so and so to this man he made a request you didn't grant it the president himself was trying to call the man to beg him he didn't even pick his call this is verified I'm not just this. Ah! May God make Koinonia a place of influence. Please answer that amen well. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Men of influence. The key to strategic kingdom advancement is key influence. Not just evangelism. That you are surrounded by men that matter. So that somebody will not come with a tractor and bulldoze your church because he thinks he has influence. Uh -uh. Influence gives you a voice. The Bible says a rich man's wealth is his strength. It's, it's a fortification. You need men of influence around your life. There's too much wickedness. Who do you know in the army that God can use to speak for you? Who do you know in the military? Who do you know in the banking system? Who has God connected you with? In the area of medicine, if someone is about to die, do you know a, an influential consultant who can facilitate his papers to go to India? You need men of influence. Say, I need men of influence. Open your mouth and pray in one minute. Send them to my life. Send them in my life. Send them in my life. Shabarako Sebredi. Rikota Shila Karuya Sebrahatala Madakadia. Lord, I pray one man of influence can change the story of your generation. One man of influence. Just one. Some of you, that's what brought you to Koinonia. You are saying, oh God, I need a miracle. God is speaking to you tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hear me. You know, they say when they post you NYSC, once they post you and nobody can walk it before. Once NYSC starts, there is no hope of you being redeployed. So they told you, in my presence, I have seen people four months in NYSC, carried away, not marriage, not pregnancy. Somebody used his influence and said, I need this person for his personal comfort to be in an area. It was quietly done. 
enable you you call it third list but there are many lists according to what influence can bring are we together there are people whose admission letters are printed overnight jammed irrespective come on now cut off point nonsense a voice is the cut off point influence and God brings them if you do not have men of influence you will join the queue in life and the queue does not move that's the sad thing about the queue in life there are too many greedy people in front of you who will not allow the queue move even when they have it they won't give you chance they will stay there till they die so the hope of you moving to your place of destiny will be impossible how many look at redeemed and living faith in every city in every place they have land do you know there are territories that antagonize christians they will not give you land but they had influence they spoke to one allergy who knows what their prayer did for him and said you better talk to your local government chairman to give us land and they say please give my pastor land as an allergy as much as he wants that's what influence can do may god give you influence in the name of jesus there are many churches in zaria who want to buy large properties there are there are lands around but they may never give churches they may never give certain people because they say one somebody holds it no 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 no. you watch what will happen in the name of jesus with koinonia let me tell you everybody on earth is a tenant nobody has a right to bully anybody for land god will give us land that will shock you it will be as if they brought it from heaven and just say pick it will happen by the spirit I'm not one of those fearful people who will not move. The earth is the Lord. But you see, it's not just the voice of heaven from the voice of God from heaven. God will connect you to somebody. I have prayed for many unbelievers and I'm happy about it because they will remember my prayer the day I need their help. I prayed for them. If God gives them breakthrough, tomorrow we'll say, please, we need your influence to buy. 10 hectares of land for koinonia and they will say let it be done if they refuse the man will buy it in his name and sell it to us influence our parents rejected men of influence now they are paying for everything just to give somebody admission in secondary school see how we fast and pray whereas one signature can answer that prayer i pray for you from the depth of my heart any man who needs to enter your life who has the influence you require may the god that i serve bring them into your life may the god that i serve bring them into your life please hear me every man on earth answers yes sir to someone are we together if they refuse to tell you go ahead find who they answer yes sir to and they will answer yes sir to you too he said for i am a man under authority i am under authority so there are others under my authority there is no man who is no matter how people make themselves gods don't be threatened by men's noise they only talk every animal claims to be the king of the jungle until the lion shows up when the lion shows up he doesn't say keep quiet they will be silent whoever has robbed your family of what is their due whoever has closed the door for you there are many of us your qualification can give you a job but the people endorsing you are like you so their words are not heard may god bring a, a man whose signature matters in the name of jesus christ there's no nonsense like a door that is closed it's a mirage someone can open that door I've had the privilege of meeting very wealthy people. I've had the privilege of meeting very influential people. And I have seen the way doors open just like that. I've seen doors open just like that. I remember one time, one of our chairman, um, the chairman board of trustees of this ministry is a general in the army. I remember when he was a colonel, sometime in Lagos, you know, we are so close and every time from the airport he will send the military people with the car his car and then with military bikes nobody does any checking as soon as they are coming they just flashlight and they salute them 
access because of influence who told you driver's license takes three months it is the general thing when my international passport expired the general himself he drove me sir with his car we went to passport office in abuja in kaduna i even did the first one in abuja so it was even complicated in 30 minutes how many minutes about 30 minutes or so they brought out my passport for me and i was ready to go the woman who did it the madam there last year i went to minister in nigerian immigration their fellowship their chapel when i went there there was a woman they had moved her there and quickly i made friends with her because my passport would expire again Keep laughing at me don't lend the wisdom in what i'm saying listen when you see men of influence don't resent them you resent them because pastors have taught you they are all unbelievers don't mind them mind them mind them just make sure their influence does not destroy you but please mind them don't have that mindset of throwing men of influence and think every gate will open to you just like that but the greatest key is to become an influence yourself when you become an influence you become a magnet to influential people oh that's why i love the anointing goodness 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 the anointing will bail you out it will make you an influence you will not just look for men of influence they will come to you the bible calls them gentiles it calls their kings he said they will come to the brightness of your rising the last kind of destiny helpers are faithful men faithful men men who will stay with you in the thick and thin 90 percent of the people you will ever meet in your life don't like you they come to you simply because of your gift and what you represent you will hardly find people who love you for who you are but in your life there are men you will find who love you for who you are they will stay with you for time's sake first first samuel 22 verse 1 and 2 please let's hurry up first samuel 22 verse 1 and 2 you reign you reign hello him you reign you reign you reign hello you reign you reign Hallelujah. David therefore departed thence. David was running away from Saul. Saul was about to kill David because he was termed a rebel. Are we together? Now David ran. And the Bible says he escaped to a cave, not a palace, a cave called Adullam. But the Bible says, and when his brethren and all his father's house had, they did what? They followed him to that cave. There are men that can follow you even when you are in the cave. May God bring them to your life. Let me tell you something. Listen, one of the most disastrous things for a leader is to not find men who believe in you when things are not going well they leave you alone when you are lonely but there are certain destiny helpers called faithful men are we together faithful men he said a friend is made for adversity there are many of us when you go through bad things there's nobody to stand there with you when everything works well everybody comes but there are a kind of destiny helpers called faithful men. Verse 2. And everyone that was in distress, one that was in debt, everyone who was discontented, gathered themselves unto him. And he became what? Captain over them in a cave. How do you submit to a man who is a failure? How do you submit to a ministry that does not have result? How do you remain loyal to a business that is not working? It's called faithfulness. There are such men. 
There are such men. We were discussing the other day with Ejimi about a particular man of God who had gone through rough times in his life and nothing had changed about his ministry. Not one person we know of influence had left the ministry because of what happened. And I said, they are called faithful men. They are not called men of God. They are not called assistants. They are called faithful men. May God position them in your life. How many great men in this country have fallen and they are left alone? There are some of us, when our parents were wealthy, there were all kinds of relatives. Now, right now, there's nobody to even pay your school fees because there are no faithful men. There are psychophants around in our world. But there are people called faithful men. The Bible says that he was captain over them and they were with him in a cave. 400 people in a cave. There was no hope. It's not like they were there hoping things would change. They were saying, if we die, let's die with you. God. If you are a leader here, please let me give you a secret. Every time you pray, don't just pray for gifted people. Pray for faithful men. A faithful man is better than a gifted man. A gifted rebel is not an asset. Hallelujah. Verse 3, and then we'll stop. And David went thence to the... Okay, let's just stop there. I'm not going to read. Let me give you the next verse to read. First Chronicles. First Chronicles. That will tell you the whole story all till... But, but then we are looking at something else. First Chronicles 12. Let's read 1 to 3, then move to verse 38. First Chronicles 12, 1 to 3, then 38. Let me show you something very powerful about these faithful men. Look at this. He said, now these are the men that came to David in, Zig in Ziklag. I'm fast forwarding now. He says, while he kept himself close because of Saul, the son of Kish, he said they were among the mighty men. What did he call them? helpers of the war so they had stayed with him even when he had now become mighty and was ready to fight he trained them they remained there they had now become helpers of the war and it lists all of them go to verse 38 for time's sake read with me please everybody hallelujah mm. all these men of war that could keep rank do you know what that hold on that means when David told them, you stand as a musician, they remained as a musician because David said it. Absolute loyalty regardless of results. Are we together? He says they came with what? A perfect heart. Nobody was doing eye service. They loved him genuinely. They were willing to die for him genuinely. He said to make David king, their determination they said david you don't need to bribe us we we are alive to make sure the word of the lord in your life will come to pass do you know god can send this man with you everything in your life can nose dive and they will come and say jimmy if everyone will leave you i will be here for you whether your wife gets pregnant or not i am here for you how many pastors are hiding many things in their lives? Because if members know, they will run away because they are selfish people. But there is a grace. I truly believe there is a grace that attracts faithful men to the life of a man. Watch the kinds of people you are attracting. And don't be too quick to say these people are my friends. We even say they are my right hand men. A friend is made for adversity. Adversity separates people. You will be shocked to see how many people will call you king of the Jews and crucify you tomorrow. But this guy said they were with a perfect heart to make sure a Jimmy becomes that CEO. With a perfect heart to make sure that Abiodun gets to that place of destiny. So even if they would die in the process, no problem. There are such men. Listen, he said, and all the rest also in Israel were of one heart. To make David king. They threw away their own personal agenda. And said David. For as long as you are not king. We will not rest. Do you have such people in your life? Who will take responsibility. And say for as long as you have not gotten that federal government job. I will not rest. You can call and say Kai uncle you have tried. Don't worry God is faithful. He said God is faithful. I take it as a ministry to make sure you become gainfully employed. 
and they will run left right and center while you are sleeping they are awake they are saying help my son when they captured reverend Ntia Ntia is in Akwaibo Ibom Uyo when they captured him Dr. Paul Enencher said he could not sleep because it's not just because he was his spiritual son he said no he began to engage certain forces and he started making calls all around called his spiritual parents Oyedepo, they called Adeboye, called federal government people and called people and said you better look for those assassins and release Intia, Intia right now Dr. Paul Enenche went himself to Akwaibom and went to prophesy on that soil and say I command that my son be released faithful man is it not enough to pray from your house when a man leaves his house to your own to help you it's no longer just friendship it's called faithfulness pray in one minute lord bring faithful men i'm tired of false people in my life take what i'm saying seriously i'm teaching you mysteries that will make your life flawless faithful men faithful men even when they know what you have done they say it will never change my relationship with you pray there are businessmen who crash just with one scandal because everybody around them is a psychophant. There are pastors who crash with just one rumor because there are no faithful men. It's a terrible thing to live your life building men to and then realizing that they are not faithful. Make sure you are praying. Shabakalabako Sotobai. Lord, bring faithful men to my life. Hallelujah. Listen. Jesus had a crowd just like Koinonia. He was teaching them. They were there for different reasons. One time, he taught a message that was too hot for them. The Bible said they started leaving. There were only certain people, his disciples that stayed. And he asked them a question. He said, will you not also leave? And then Peter, he said, to whom shall we go? Don't you know we are sold out? To whom shall we go? He said, you alone have the word of life. And when they were crucifying Peter, theologically, historically, they kept Peter and were about to nail him. And Peter said, I have one request. I know I will die, but I'm, I'm not worthy to die in the same position with Jesus. Turn me upside down and let me die. Faithfulness unto death. I like you to pray especially those of us who are trusting God for marriage by the time all you have in your life is a man who just wants you because of figure eight you are in trouble by the time you have a woman who just likes you because you have money or you are working in shell you are in trouble lift your voice and say faithful men faithful men faithful men pray faithful men faithful men anointed to stay with your vision anointed to stay with your life hallelujah hallelujah there are many people who pray for me the prayer department prays for me my parents pray for me but there is a woman you have never seen the woman i met this woman in a meeting and the woman said she had a revelation when she listened to my message she said i have entered a covenant with god she said i'm an intercessor i've entered a covenant with god that until i go to heaven i am an intercessor for you and your ministry god is i've never given this woman one naira God is my witness. You can ask the protocol and all those who follow me. They don't even know the woman. I have never given her one naira. Once in a while, she will just send me texts and say, my son, just know your mother is praying for you. I tell you, there are times I'll be trusting God, all decisions and her text just comes. Faithful people. They will never ask for money. They will never ask and say, when you get there, it's chop by chop. They, they, they see it as a ministry to make sure you prosper i've seen people like that 
with all humility and by the grace of God one of such people is our daddy here I remember when um, there was a time that you know we're looking for the venue for ministry and all of that do you know daddy took the responsibility single-handedly there are still people here they they would ask about koinonia as if it's even their ministry it's like they are more concerned about it than me i sent a text to a few people telling them we're trusting god to buy land you know to, to to get land and all of that and one of the women sent and said i've been waiting for this she said i've been waiting for this make sure when it starts my contribution comes in she said i will be offended if my money is not part of the money that is used to buy land faithful men a pastor may have nothing but faithful men and i tell you he has more than assets he may not be able to play the keyboard well but he's faithful he will die with you are we together there are people who were once in this ministry today they have left some of them are abroad they are the ones spreading koinonia messages around i don't know them but they take those messages all around it's an anointing that is upon this ministry faithfulness i tell you we don't force people to do anything here there is a grace i saw it in certain ministries i pursued it like a man pursues water when i found it i got it and i knew many of us have too many disloyal people in our lives you are not sure of anybody close to you they will laugh with you now and when they turn they can say crucify him let me tell you no matter how careful you are you cannot make men faithful by yourself it would take a heart under god for them to vow and say i love this man i am loyal to him to death there are people today if they bring a gun to shoot they will stand and receive that shooting for me i know that not everybody but there are people you need that in your life because you are dear facebooking people chatting with people and saying you are my best friend you are my best this they will leave you let me tell you something when the going gets tough because in every man's life there are valleys there are times of challenge how many wives left their husbands simply because for one year there was no money they packed their load and went how many husbands left their wives and started looking for another small girl simply because after five years she could not give them a child faithfulness is important don't think i'm joking when I, when we are saying this please i want you to pray again and say lord in my life send faithful men i told you they are anointed they are commissioned they are anointed they are commissioned they don't just come they are sent send faithful men send faithful men hallelujah number six please sit down we're rounding up the last key that controls undeniable results and impact in the kingdom this is probably the greatest of the laws that I know. It's called the law of honor. Pay attention. Somebody's life is about to change. The law of honor. Matthew chapter 10, verse 41 and 42. There is an anointing for every dimension of uncommon results in the kingdom. Listen, I'm establishing the law of honor. The law of honor is predicated upon a revelation that there is an anointing. Hear me. There is a grace for every dimension in the kingdom. Results do not just happen. There are graces that activate possibilities. There is a kind of grace that brings influence. There is a kind of grace that brings wealth. There is a kind of grace that brings freshness. Are we together now? So that's the first thing you need to know about the law of honor. That there is an anointing for every dimension of uncommon results. How you know there is a grace working is when the result becomes consistent regardless of the opposing situations. 
when a result becomes consistent there is a law and a grace at work number two human beings are God's reservoirs of spiritual anointings spiritual graces God keeps his anointings in men not in jars not in goya oil they can just be prophetic contacts but god's instruments god's instrument for hosting his anointing listen he that received a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive what look up did he say shall receive god's reward there is something called a prophet reward is the reward that goes with his office are we together it is the possibility he can release to you in honor of the god he serves and the office he represents and it does not just mean a man of god it's a law every time you see a man walking in a dimension consistently regardless of opposing forces there is a grace making that I have seen people in my life they are not very wealthy but they never beg i don't know what kind of grace that is the moment supplies are about to finish something else comes they never have one billion but they never lack if they need to travel abroad someone pays for the visa i've seen these people very strange people they kneel down and say lord send help from zion and men are rushing they will not bring one billion they don't have 20 cars they may just have one or two cars but you will come to their house you will never beg for bread it's a grace are we together when you see a ministry exploding in membership there is a grace when you see people moving from one dimension to the other there is a grace you can see a lady who may not even represent what supposedly most ladies may think brothers want in sisters yet you find 10 12 15 brothers flocking around and everybody saying this and that she can say no i'm in a relationship you say close that one and, and come to me I'm, I'm ready to whatever it takes and you are wondering come my brother is it that is it that this lady is gold he says me too i don't know it's a grace are we together that lady will leave that ministry and go to another one where nobody knows her and the result becomes the same there are people when they ask you something you can't say no you you swear heaven and hell and say this is the last time i'll give anybody this this lantern they just knock and say hey, Jimmy, please can you help me with it you stand up like a zombie and pick it there is a grace there is a grace I have seen this there is a grace that brings a healing anointing in a ministry it's not just by faith there are people who have these graces now listen to me please your life revolves around the levels of the possibilities you have activated i wish what i were saying were a lie i would have quietly apologized and just sat down but this is true it has changed my life it is changing my life it has changed this ministry it is changing this ministry the law of honor is the cheapest route to greatness the law of honor i used to think service was the cheapest route until i learned the law of honor my goodness you can quantum leap your destiny in one day you can veto imperfections in your life by practicing the law of honor. It has worked in my life like a charm. The Bible says, He that received a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. He that receives a fruitful woman in the name of a fruitful woman shall receive what? A fruitful woman's reward. He that receives a millionaire in the name of a millionaire will receive a millionaire's reward the keys that made him what he is listen you can men are dimensional 
that you are close to a man does not mean you have exhausted his dimensions there is joshua selman the human being there is joshua selman the friend there is joshua selman the man of god are we together there is joshua selman the businessman there is joshua selman the whatever it is there is a dimension you have not seen if you only know me as a man of god you receive that reward if i become your friend you will have access to certain things that people will not have are we together if you come to see me in the capacity of a man of god you can sit down i will open my fridge and serve you because you are coming as a man of god but if you come as my friend when a jimmy comes to see me whatever i'm eating is what he will just pick it and keep eating he has he is not going to ask me we will even talk about it he wants malt he can open the fridge and carry it and we'll take are we together because we are friends are we together but when we begin to talk we align to the relevant dimensions that reflect the graces we carry when i'm talking to my parents we can crack jokes but when i'm about to say something serious i switch because i'm talking to men who brought me to this world they have an anointing to speak over my life are we together you can see me greet our daddy and just crack jokes but when i'm about to talk to him i talk to him in the capacity of the grace he carries are we together now that's why you see us do certain things like some of our elderly ones we don't let them just join the queue they sit down these things are communications of honor that's why we provide buses for you after the service it's not just that we have money to throw around no it is to honor you it's a law of honor because it is our belief in this ministry that everybody seated is carrying an anointing and most of those anointings we need it and so we honor you to receive it are we together now yes you want a car you see somebody who has a car you buy fuel you are receiving him in the name of a car owner you will get a car owner's reward you see someone in a relationship you don't keep gossiping about his relationship you package a seed and sow into his life and sow into that lady's life and say whatever made you get this good man whatever made you get this good woman you got this woman when you were not born again meaning it was not your effort this is grace i need it you sow into that life you are walking someone is not working and you are saying is it teacher that i'll sow into you see so you never rise one day you get up in the morning and wash the person's clothes and iron the clothes and he gets up and says ah, my roommate what is this for you say i didn't iron it as roommate i'm tired of joblessness i'm tapping into the grace that frequency in the spirit that afforded you opportunity out of the millions of jobless people you got a job how many barren people have honored those who have children they will criticize them hallelujah an anointing you have dishonored has run away from your life an anointing you have refused to bring into your life through honor maybe the reason why you are grounded hear me i'm rounding up you saw a prayer grace in koinonia and you felt please these guys just pray too loud they just shout like idiots i like the excellence i like the word but the prayer and so you find out that you pray for five minutes and snore your life away because you ignore that grace it's called the spirit of prayer and supplication you saw grace for an accurate understanding of the word and you criticize it that's why those who criticize great men never become great you see why our parents are sincere but the way they are they criticize every preacher on tv they criticize every actor they criticize every government worker when they watch news everything is criticism they insult everybody who have you insulted to your detriment whose anointing have you resented let me tell you the key to activating the law of honor number one you must believe in god number two you must believe in the vessel who is the carrier of that anointing you must not just believe in the person you must believe in the office the operation of that anointing i i pray for you that you get this we're about to pray but you need to get this for in your presence there is life 
everlasting I will reverence you Lord I will reverence you Lord I will reverence you Lord for in your presence there is life everlasting I will reverence you Lord listen I have followed men and women who have carried on common graces not just in ministry I have I have I have honored them with my life I saw into different TV ministries because Koinonia will soon have their own TV ministry. I never open my mouth and criticize anybody's TV ministry because somebody is going to be watching our own soon. So I plant a seed of honor. Are we together now? Yeah. I sow into the lives of people's children because I'm planting a seed of honor for my own children. I don't want my children begging for school fees, begging for bread. So I take care of other people's children. That's why I don't kick children and throw them out here. I take care of them. Let me tell you something. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, without fail, except for the mercy of God, he will receive it. We have criticized people. You have not started ministry. Yet every man of God does not have Rema for you. You are in for a shock. In for a big shock. You have not started business. Yet you look and say, Kai, this guy, he's talking, talking, talking. It's as if he's by luck, except he built this company. Continue talking. No reference for people's sacrifices. Let me tell you something. Behind every glory, there is a story. If you do not respect the story, and the glory you will never replicate it in your life never ever never ever there are people by the grace of god who i have never met eyeball to eyeball i've heard about them they have reproduced the grace upon my life verbatim every anointing you see is yours for the taking but the key is honor honor is not kneeling down and lifting your hands let me tell you something Honor is not kneeling down, lifting your hands. You have heard that there is a favor anointing in this ministry. I don't know whether you believe it or not. There are many people who never believe it. So you will sit down with circles of disfavor. Whereas people are recording unending testimonies of the hand of God. By the grace of God, everything we do in this ministry prospers. It's a grace. Have you tapped into it? Is it working for you? Listen. As a faithful person in this ministry, you should be a reflection, an epistle of the graces and the anointings that are here. Don't let people come from somewhere. You see how people behave when they come from other places. Their hearts are open. They are not distracted because they are coming only for a few hours or a few days and going back. But many people just sit down. Koinonia, koinonia. And they enjoy. And after the grace, they stand up and walk away. Proximity to an anointing does not release it upon your life it takes honor honor is the spiritual magnet that brings graces to people me and Ejimi were watching a man of God one time and I looked at this man of God I said Kai this guy carries an uncommon grace for wealth an uncommon grace he's not so fluent he's not even so intelligent you know that there are many business principles this guy does not know but there is there is an uncommon grace this guy had 10 cars in 10 weeks. One, one every week. On common grace. And we said, no, this guy knows what he's saying. I will not criticize such a man. I will listen with my heart open. I can ignore his imperfections and get what I need. Listen, anointings do not flow through perfect vessels. Joshua Selman is not a perfect vessel. If you are waiting for perfection, you may never enter certain levels of grace. Ignore the imperfections and get the anointing. We are going to pray. He 
Hebrews 7 verse 7. Shabala katabara to say. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you. There are things that were not in my life before. I know they were not there. I knew when they came. I honored my way through them. Honor is not human worship. Honor is not even giving somebody offering. It's just a communication. The honor is a recognition and a celebration of the hand of God and the sacrifice of that person in the secret and in the open. There are men of God I will never talk against in secret and in the open. It doesn't mean I agree with everything they do. Honestly, I don't. However, I honor them with my life. I'm not ashamed to declare that they are custodians of certain levels of grace. And you receive it. We have resented people. Little results in our lives. But we are very quick to resent people. You see a lady getting married and you look and say, Ah, and she's not fine. No, Kai, the way God does his thing, self. That's what your eyes could see. What you just said in the realm of the spirit is I dissociate myself from this experience. That's what you have said. Every time you communicate dishonor, that's what you say. Lord, I dissociate myself from this experience. We are going to pray. Six laws I have given you. You will play them like a computer game and watch your life skyrocket. You will, you will tame life like a chess. You know how people play chess. Life is not magic. It's not chance. As haphazard as it is, there is a synergy. There is a rhythm to life. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you see everything I've been saying. It's one thing to hear what I'm saying, but it's another thing to see it. He says, I will stand upon my watch. I will set myself upon the tower. Right? He said, and I will see what the Lord will say to me. Some of these things I share with you freely. I got them from my own mistakes. I got them through pain. I got them through sacrifice. But they are irrefutable laws. Bring any man for me. Walk these laws and watch Satan bow. Watch gates open by themselves. I don't care whether it's gates of finances. I don't care whether it's gates of health. I don't care whether it's gates of ministry. Gates of business. There is nothing you are doing that has not been done before. Ask those who master this key. If he's setting up a company, you are not the first to do it. If it's marriage, you are not the first to do it. If it's barrenness, you are not the first to be barren. The day your light comes, that becomes your day of salvation. Something I have ignored. I used to do a lot of things and allow people punish me. There was a man of God that set me free. Just one revelation from him. I could go and borrow money and come and help somebody to be careless and run into debt at the expense of the carelessness of someone because I felt I had to be everything to everybody. And one day, one man of God delivered me. His name is Dr. Mike Modok. Just one statement. He said, never do to people what only God can do to them. Ah, that was it. That was my deliverance. I found out that I was becoming God to many people. So I was taking God's responsibility in the lives of so many people. And it was killing me. And I said, no, rather than being God, let me start leading men to God. And it gave me freedom. There are some of us who are always paying bills for people who are not serious. You give them 20,000, they go and destroy it. You give them 100,000 for a business, they throw it. And you keep doing that. It's running the finances of your home. You are being God to them. Lead them to God. Teach them the principles. Give them access to responsibility. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray. Hallelujah. We're just going to have three prayer points. I'm going to give us the next five minutes. I like you to blast in tongues. We are going to pray. The secrets of the kingdom, like Bishop Oyedeko will say, that has been responsible for producing stars in the kingdom. 
life is not guesswork. Stop guessing. Koinonia, stop guessing. You can walk circumspectly by knowledge. By knowledge. By knowledge. Lift your voice and begin to pray in tongues. Pray in the spirit. Pray. Pray your ignorance away. Pray your doubts away. Shibara Paskala Bariana Balaba Mambra Takarato Soto Bridge Ekaraba Baba Barada Balada Balada Bash Rababa Catala Barada Balada Ayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayay
by grace and influence. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. I will arise and shine. Arise. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Isaiah 60, please. One to three. We are going to sing this song one more time. As you sing it, listen. I want you to see yourself like someone coming out of a pit. See yourself coming out of financial pits. See yourself coming out of all kinds of things. Sing it with understanding. The Bible says sing praises with understanding. Sing it and we'll read this scripture and I'll pray for you. I arise and shine. My light is come. Oh, hallelujah. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. I will arise and shine. I arise and shine. My light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. One more time. I arise and shine. Yeah. My light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Arise, he says. Shine for your light. What I've been teaching you has come. All you have been hearing, the mysteries that produce champions in the kingdom has come. It says, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Verse 2, for behold, it says, the darkness shall cover the earth. Cross darkness the people. It says, but the Lord shall arise upon you. And his glory shall be seen upon you. Verse 3. Hold on. Listen. I like you everywhere you see die. Put my. This is a prophecy for you before I speak over your life. Are you ready? Read it convincingly as a prophetic word. One to read. Gentiles shall come to my light and their kings to my rising. One more time. And Gentiles shall come to my light and their kings. Listen. I have seen this thing in the spirit. I have seen men rise. While I was seeking God for this year, God told me it's a year of multiplied grace and influence. It's not just a name. Brothers and sisters, we are about to round up. We are getting towards the end of the first half. There are signals that I'm beginning to receive in my spirit that men are going to change states like day and night. Believe what I'm telling you. That's why I'm teaching you this. The Lord began to put it in my spirit. It's time for people to change. My own assignment is to teach you this and release the grace. God's assignment is to watch over his word and bring it to pass. Lift your hands as I speak over you. Please, I want you to believe. The Bible says, blessed is she that believes. He said for there shall be a performance I pray for you the gates of the next level of your destiny be open now the gates of the next level of your destiny be open now the gates of the next level of your destiny by prophecy be open now. I speak to you. Change levels now. Change levels now. Change levels now. Change levels now. I speak to your finances. Money has a spirit. I call you to men now. I call you to men now. I call forth resources in the name of Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to end struggle. This life of hardship that many people are going through. I pray for you. The life of struggle and hardship. He said they are taking for a prey and none said restore. I command that life of hardship come to an end now. Come to an end now. Kaparataka. Reketekete. Come to an end now. Come to an end now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to believe in the Lord. I want you to believe what I'm saying. I want to release favor on you. I don't know how to make you believe this thing. But brothers and sisters, I can kneel down and beg you. Receive this prayer I'm about to pray for you. There is a grace that favors men in this life. If you walk your way to destiny, you will die young. I knock on the door of favor. And I pray in the name of Jesus. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Step into a new dimension of favor. Right now, right now. Step into strange favor. Kabatakarataya. A new dimension of favor. A new level of favor. Like a mantle. Let it come upon you. Like a mantle. Let it come upon you. Like a mantle. Let it come upon you. Hallelujah. Listen. There is a grace for performance. At the beginning of this year, the Lord told me, son, there is an anointing I put on your life called grace for performance. The anointing that forces things to work. It doesn't matter whether it has worked for anybody or not. There must be a way around it to work. I pray for you. I don't know what has refused to work in your life. That grace for performance, receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The anointing that calls destiny help us. There is a grace like a magnet that draws them wherever they are. I place an anointing on you. Let it call them now. Help them please. Help them under the anointing. I call, I place that grace like a mantle. It will come upon you now. Hallelujah. I pray for you. Everything that has closed your glory so that you are not seen tonight in the name of the Lord God of Israel I declare may your glory rise for all to see may your glory rise for all to see may your glory rise for all to see hear me there are people here you get results but you work for everything by yourself everything by yourself I stop that circle in your life in the name of Jesus fill this temple Lord fill this vessel Lord fill this temple Lord fill this vessel Lord for I am nothing without you, Lord. You are the power at work in me. Yeah. You're my life, you're my breath, you're my all. You're my all. It's your presence that grants us the ability to minister to your people. Lord, I thank you for the blessings of your presence. Thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit, my friend, my teacher, 
my advocate, my strengthener, stand by. The one who turns every wilderness into a fruitful vine and every fruitful vine into a forest. Lord, I thank you. It's all about you. Jesus. And all this is for you. Truly. It's for your glory and your fame. It's not about me. I see if you should do things my way You alone are God And I surrender Lord, we are standing before your presence We have come to meet he that is able to change my father, there are sick bodies in this place. There are oppressed people. Joshua Selman cannot help them. Lord, let the people know I'm not the healer. Let the people know I'm not the deliverer. Let the people know there is nothing I have that did not come from you. That I'm a product of your mercy and your grace. And that you desire to bring everyone into this realm of intimacy. The glory of your presence, let it fill this place. Let the glory of your presence fill this place. Let the glory of your presence fill this place. Mantle your people with your presence, O oh God. Mantle your people. Let there be a holy convocation. My Father, my Father, Abba Father, my Father, I dare to call you my Father, my Maker, my Father. I hide behind the cross. Let the people see Jesus. Blessed be Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Mighty, majestic, holy. I adore you. Lord, let the people feel the peace of my passion for you. Shena Maria, na 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 mo shanta bala na 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 na. Zena Maria.
for there is more of my presence here, the Spirit of God. I desire to draw men into my presence. Come, approach my glory, say the Spirit of God. I lead you into my glory, say the Spirit of God. I lead you into my glory, say the Spirit of God. Into the beauty of holiness. Where I crown you with splendor and joy. That is where I replace your heaviness. Just worship him in one minute. Let's let the whole shows up your flesh begins to react that part that will not bend to his glory in his presence he will be refined i tell you the truth the secret of grace when you touch him, the world will know that you touched him. There's no guessing it. There's no pretending it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God who sits in the heavens glory to your name verse 11 and God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul so that from his body James. Who is James? James. James. Who is that? Can I see your hands? Come quick. You are awesome here. Yes, 
place You were awesome in this place There are healings going on God is healing people right about now You feel the heat of the spirit going through your body It's the healing anointing all of you. See, the fire of God is upon your hands, even for your music. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me, sir. Where's your father? What's he doing? Your mother? Yes. You have been praying about it in the family. God says, I should tell you that your father is going to receive a job and that for everything that they have done against him, that God is going to replenish sevenfold. Are you listening to me? Take this word and take it back to me. You are a student here. Yeah? What department are you? Computer science. Do you have any problem with your... Do you have anything with your courses? Pray. Because I see that in this exam you are writing, there is a problem and that problem will, may delay you in this one. I listen to me. Pray that God will help you. And don't be rude to any lecturer. Are you listening to me? Does this make sense what I'm telling you? Don't be rude to any lecturer. You'll be frustrated for nothing. The Lord bless you. Acts chapter 19. And God wrought special miracles through the hands of Paul so that from his body were brought to the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. Listen to me. It's God's desire that we become living tabernacles of his presence. Are you listening to me? That we become vessels of glory. The Bible says there is this treasure in earthen vessel that the excellency of power might be of God and not of us. It's God's desire that we come to a point where our bodies can host his glory. Where we can host his power. Where we can host his anointing. Are you listening to me? The Bible says that Paul was so full of God. He said handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of Paul. Handkerchiefs and aprons taken from the body of Paul. And the Bible makes us to realize that these handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of Paul and it was used. And devils cried out. Sick people got healed. There is a realm of glory and anointing and power hear me that god wants us to step into beyond nominal christianity listen to me we live in a wicked world are you listening to me the lord has been showing me visions of the kind of demonic and satanic things 
that hell is releasing against God's people. Oppression, sickness. And now we, we have, let me tell you something and I want to warn you, listen. I believe in the word of God. But can I tell you something? Christianity without power will frustrate you. Are you listening to me? That you become full of God's glory. Full of God. The Bible says in that day. It says the burden shall be lifted from off your shoulder. And what? The yoke from off your neck. And it says it shall be destroyed. Because of the anointing. In our bid to put balance between the word and anointing. People have given all kinds of excuses for not pressing into God. And we have trivialized the anointing of the Holy Spirit to a point that many people just say, look, forget about it. There's all these people manifestation all the time. Let's sit down and receive the word. What is your definition of the word? Because in the days of the apostles, they did not have what you call the Bible. So what was the word of God? Are you listening to me? A powerless Christianity will end you in frustration. I get... I get messages and I meet people almost daily. And I tell you the kind of oppression that Satan is bringing, the hostility that is coming from the pit of hell does not require just the kind of Christianity where you say, John 3, 16, all things are mine. Uh -uh. Are you listening to me? Handkerchiefs, the Bible says. An apron. Paul was so full of the Holy Ghost. The power the anointing, the potency of the spirit was in him. The Bible says to a point that people were waiting for him to step out. Peter was so full of the divine life of God that when he stepped out, his shadow, his shadow. Hallelujah. Jesus said something in Isaiah. In fact, Luke 18. Let's read the account in Luke chapter 4, sorry. From verse 17. The Bible says that he went into the temple as his custom was. And there was given to him the book that was written by prophet Isaiah. And then he opened it and there he declared, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he, that Spirit, has anointed me. Smeared me, anointed me. And because of the anointing that I carry, he said, I will set the captives free. Declare liberty to the poor. It's amazing how we try to do God's work without his anointing. The anointing of God's spirit is his empowerment. It's the energizing that the spirit of God brings in us. Hallelujah. No king was ever allowed to function in ancient time until he was anointed. When the Holy Spirit comes into your life, listen to me. One of the things that he does is not just to enlighten you and cause the word of God to come alive in your spirit. The Holy Ghost empowers you. Hallelujah. He causes his anointing to be alive and to be at work in your spirit. The Holy Spirit causes you to come into the place of his ability and his power. Causes you to begin to walk in the glory of God. The Bible says, and Stephen, full of the Holy Ghost. It took the Holy Ghost for Stephen to have just been stoned. And he did not, he was not angry. It takes, listen, listen to me. It takes the spirit for you to do some things you want to do. Are you listening to me? It takes the Holy Ghost to love. For the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart. By the Holy Ghost. It takes the Holy Ghost to heal the sick, to set the captives free. If our Christianity is true, then we must be like Jesus. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 10 verse 38, Peter speaking, he said, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. The Jesus we are trying to become like, the Bible says he went about doing good on account of that anointing and the ability of the spirit and healing all they that were oppressed
for God was with him. Hallelujah. Are you not tired of sympathizing with the many oppressed people around you? Are you listening to me? How many oppressed people do you see around you every day and every time? Listen to me. Every time I see oppression, I take responsibility for it. Because I know that God is not limited. There is a level of glory and grace that we must step into. And when we step into that level of glory and grace, you will be able to host a greater weight of his presence. Are you listening to me? A greater weight of his anointing. A greater weight of his power. And out of the overflow of that reality, you will step in and begin to do the works of Jesus. He said, if you say you are the children of Abraham, then do the works of Abraham. That means if you say you are the children of God, do the works of God. Handkerchiefs and aprons. In John chapter 7, Jesus speaking from verse 34. It was on the last day of the feast and Jesus said, if any man thirst, he said, let him come unto me. If any man thirst, let him come. He said, and that he will drink and that out of his belly shall flow what rivers rivers the revelation of that river is given in ezekiel chapter 47 when the bible begins to talk about the river that came from the east side of the temple and the bible says that he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my knees and then he measured a thousand cubits and then it was to um you know my my ankles he measured a thousand cubits it was to the loins he measured a thousand cubits he said and it was a river that i could not pass through he said wherever that river went the fish that was dead will come alive it's a life-giving river in fact the bible says there is a stream he said there is a river whose stream makes glad the city of god there is a river the river of healing the river of blessing, the river of power, the river of deliverance. And God desires that we step into that realm where we can be useful for the king. Many of us, listen to me, we must step up. Many of us have been good counselors enough. It's time for us to be miracle workers. Are you listening to me? We have done enough of counseling enough of saying wow one day in the sweet by and by now it's time to be miracle workers doing the works of jesus christ there are many of you that if you will increase capacity you will end the captivity in your family you know what i'm talking about the thief cometh not john 10 10 but to steal to kill and to destroy satan has left his mark upon many lives and many families I was sharing, I think it was during the minister's meeting, I was saying that how that the Lord showed me, I saw an unusual release of the spirit of cancer. Cancer sent to different families. Breast cancer, lung cancer, cancer of the four ladies, cancer of... I saw these things and it amazed me. And let me tell you something. If your Christianity is just enough to say, wow, Lord, I thank you there will come a time when it will be as if the Bible lied about the victory of Jesus. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. In fact, the Bible says that when I came to you, Paul speaking, he said, I did not come with the excellency of speech. The world has had enough of our noise. He said, but in the demonstration of power that your faith will not be grounded on the wisdom of man but on the power of God there are so many situations that happen to believers and we are so helpless about it and as helpless as we are God is also sad because that's not the limit there is more that he can do through us but we must build greater capacity for his glory When we sing the song, what manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. He sings back and says, what manner of man are you? 
that you will not yield to me to see the fullness of me. What manner? Paul walked in a realm. See, listen, these guys walked in a realm that they called them gods. He said the gods are come down to us. They say Paul was Zeus and then his colleague Hermes. These were ancient gods. Men who lived like spirits upon the surface of the earth. This has nothing to do with ministry. It is the blueprint for safety for the times we are coming. You must be full of God. The anointing will be broken only to the degree. I, I, I think we, we were watching a program this evening. And we were watching something. It was a deliverance that was happening to someone. And then I was watching. And when the person got delivered, the demon entered. Another demon entered back into the person again. Hallelujah. When you are full of the presence of God, I assure you, no demon. See, the Bible says, if you read NIV and other versions, they said the burden will be lifted because of the fatness of your neck. That the anointing will increase you to a point spiritually. Peter Tan, one great man of God, was caught up in the spirit some years ago. And he saw the state of his spirit man. The body was flourishing, eating every kind of thing. And when he saw his spirit, the spirit, his spirit man, was as thin as a broom, almost dying. And God told him, this is how you are spiritually. We have many men of God flourishing physically, but carrying no power. That's the reason why people criticize miracles and criticize the manifestation of the Spirit. And everything they say, said, look, just stay, stay with the Word. I believe in the Word of God. There are many people that come for miracle service and hold their Bibles in their hands. And at the end of it, you find them outside and demons are crying out of them. It is the ministry of the Word of God in conjunction with the operation of His Spirit that will bring men into liberty, that will bring men into truth. Are you not tired of the Christianity you see around? I'm asking you a question. Don't you ask questions that either... God told us a lie in the Bible or there is something we are not getting. And let me tell you something. I blame the leaders, including myself. The reason is because the degree to which we press in the spirit is the degree to which we give others opportunity to come in. When we become complacent with where we are and a few falling down here and there, there is a higher realm beyond just falling up and down where a man becomes full of the life and the power and the glory of the spirit. Listen, the Bible says Stephen just lifted his eyes and there the heavens was open to him. Can you imagine such a realm? Hallelujah. A man met me for counseling and he shared a story that broke me. This is what he said. He said he went to a particular ministry having a challenge, him and his wife. And after they, after they prayed, you know, prayed, did everything for him, he was desperate. Listen, he was really desperate and his wife was dying. And when it looked like nothing was working, guess what he did? You will guess right. He went to a, you know, all kinds of things and, and did all kinds of conjunctions. And now, when, when people hear this, we do like this. Don't do that until you can provide solution. Let me tell you something. We have no right to criticize any fake person until we can do the real thing. Are you listening to me? Is, um, do you know how many people, how many of your parents, how many of your brothers, how many of your loved ones that run to native doctors every day? They come to church on Sunday. You know what I'm saying. And you know I'm not telling a lie. Let me tell you, we live in a world that has a real need. Are you listening to me? A real need. A real need. And it takes the anointing of the Spirit. Jesus walked upon the earth. And the moment he stepped into the scene, he was a breath of fresh air because the, the scribes and the Pharisees could not help. Lord, I pray that we will not be scribes and Pharisees in our generation. 
that our Christianity will be an authentic Christianity that will be able to meet the needs of people and do the works of Jesus Christ. We must be dissatisfied with a few miracles here and there. If there are 150 people who are sick and three people get healed, we should be ashamed and go back and cry. Not rejoice and carry titles and say, man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Am I challenging you? Because when you challenge yourself and you begin to press into the spirit, then you open up yourself for more of his presence. When I began to study about God's generals, let me tell you something. I tell you sincerely, the generals that lived, I mean, before most of these people, they did not have the opportunity for their life to be recorded. Those guys walk like spirits on the earth. You need to study about them. And you'll be ashamed of the things we are doing. Number one, they had no worship team that steers the atmosphere. Right now, we live in a realm where you must steer the atmosphere as if the Holy Spirit has become a generator. So you say, okay, let's whine. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Now the power is moving. Those guys moved in a realm of grace, a realm of power. Their miracles were real miracles. Are you listening to me? I heard of a particular man who they came and someone's, I mean, there was a there was a wound this big. The whole family had done everything and he held it and closed it. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. What is your degree of hunger? Handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of Paul. Do you know something? I told myself one day, if I have the opportunity to preach in a pastor's conference, I will do something. I will carry one person on wheelchair, one blind person, one amputee, and I'll tell them, follow me for the ministration. I will line three of them here and say, anybody that cannot heal these three, sit quietly and let's press. Now, we can laugh and feel nice, but the native doctors are corrupting people. They are corrupting our families. All kinds of things are happening. There are people who are dying. Satan's kingdom is advancing. I, I, I was watching a, a program again this evening, and someone was saying how that he was in the occult, and he said he single-handedly won more than one million souls. Single-handedly. I said, God, with our media, we rejoice and say blue roof is full and we should be ashamed of ourselves. Are you listening to me? The Bible says, woe to them who are at ease in Zion. When there is a dissatisfaction in you, you are ready to press further. Tonight I brought you to tell you that the realm that we are in the spirit, there is a higher realm. There are many of you who are sick. You have been sick for long. Your families are sick. Is that true? You have prayed for them. Nothing happened. What are you doing about it? Something pinching you from inside. Or are you just complacent? For our fathers of old pressed into God. Jacob held him and said, I will not let you go. I will not let you go. I will not let you go. That a time will come your guitar stiff strings will be more than what it is today. That as you stand before the nations and strike one chord, one chord, it will reverberate the hearts of men. We live in a generation with many Christians and nobody can tell us a very concise plan of God concerning Boko Haram. We have, men, we have men of God, all kinds of men, prophets, apostles. We should be ashamed of all these our titles. When Naaman sent, Naaman was sent with a letter to the king of Israel. And he went and he gave him. The king was afraid. Elisha said, why are you afraid? Call that man to come and let him know there is a prophet in Israel. I don't know how many of us can make that kind of statement. Yes, we have celebrated HIV, tuberculosis,
hands us. We have seen the grace of God, but it's nothing compared to what God wants. Can I tell you something? Listen. If this is my ministry inside this room, I tell you if I can solve your problem, the whole world will come and join the queue. Are you listening to me? Even if they will reach just, they will be patient. Do you know how little the solution of mankind is? Many people are not pressing into God. It takes sacrifice, friends, to get to that realm. It takes sacrifice. That's why many people are not pressing. That's why the few that press, when they get there, they are the only ones and pride kills them. Because the sacrifice is too great. When they get there, there is nobody in their class. Are you following me now? One of the greatest men that I respect, Prophet Kobus, who has stepped into a level of the miraculous that I'm satisfied with. In one service, they brought out about 200 people on wheelchairs and crutches. Now that's, that's the work of the kingdom. The day everybody enters here and we prophesy to you and we say in the name of Jesus, receive a miracle in your family and instantly you receive a phone call from your father. Even you will know that something different has happened. I assure you, next week, Koinonia, by four, you will be here. All your loved ones will live wherever they are. Do you know the rat race of man is to look for solutions? I assure you, if they find the real solution, they will come. How many barren people move among us all the time? We pray and feel like men of God. Ah, tonight I'm here to challenge you. In your room. In your room. You can preach 100 sermons. If you raise one person from wheelchair here, you will do publicity without a poster. And many people will come. Even if you will come and complain, they will just say, let's shout Embedded in the heart of every man is the need for every real solution. And let me tell you the truth. The fact that many people are skeptical about us means that there is, we are not yet providing that degree of the God life. Because people will look. Jesus was an awesome wonder. Let me ask you a question. Please, let me ask you a question. Please come, Aaron. Sweetheart, please come. You're a student here? Yeah? You're in demonstration. All right, listen to me. If Jesus were to appear to you right now, let's assume I'm Jesus. And he says, what do you want me to do for you? What will you say? You will run and carry your list. That means, the, that means you have problems. You are just laughing. The truth is you are not confident of the solution that is being... That's why you are quietly hiding it and say, let's manage what is there. If, if Jesus Christ, if we are truly his representatives, are you listening to me? How many of you can step in to a meeting and be sure that you'll be healed? Be sure that you'll be changed. That when they say, in the name of Jesus, you are blessed, you are sure that that word will come to pass. Are you listening to me? That this lady is here. If I am Jesus Christ, what, what, what class are you? JS3. You are going to write JSC. You are finished. Now, if I am Jesus Christ and I come to you and I say, sweetheart, your JSC is A, will you doubt me? Why? Because I am Jesus Christ. Is that not true? Now we say, as he is in heaven. Listen. Listen. Listen, we say as he is in heaven, so are we in this life. But how come if I tell you be blessed, the truth is you are not seeing all of the blessings in your life. You are just afraid to tell me the truth. Are you listening to me? We gather people and claim to get them filled with the Holy Spirit, struggle over them, struggle over them, turn their head up and down, and then carry our frustration and go away. And the people are irritated. They know there is no power there. Hallelujah. It's amazing that in the midst of this lapse, we have men of God who make such boasts. They say the man of... Do you know, I get very ashamed Every time they say, now let's introduce the man of God, apostle. And before they start, people are shouting. 
I'm saying, okay, Apostle Josh, Apostle Paul, Apostle Peter, Apostle this, do we match? So when people are saying, Kai, look at the demonstration of the power, look at this, uh -uh. I'm telling myself, I will not let anybody lie to me. I know the standard. The world is in a big need. We are celebrating ourselves like this because we have not been exposed. Go to the village and see the preparation that demons are doing. You will know we are joking. You know all this falling down doesn't impress them. It's just us that are hyping here. You go to the village and see a man divide a pot into two and pour water and you are seeing the other side and the water is boiling. Come on now. Even you, when you see that kind of thing, you will look at that man. I'm stirring up a real Christianity of power. And the truth is, when he finishes, when your father cannot afford your school fees, after going to the man of God and praying and sowing seed, prophet's offering, apostle's offering, every kind of offering, it doesn't work. I assure you, your father is going to the village. Except the problem is not too much. How many sick people leave Chica? Straight, they pass our churches and go to the villages. Some of your parents, have they not done it? We all came to Chica and prayed for them. Gathered around like men of God and made our boast and our noise and nothing happened. And while they just look, they say, thank you, man of God. In their heart, they already know there's no hope. And somebody calls them and says, sorry, um, we, we, there, is, there is one Baba. And now you can sit down and easily say, how can a man go to a Baba? You are not yet desperate for solution. A woman who has been around 10 years, 12 years, no children. Any suggestion will make sense at that point. Are you listening to me? You are here struggling and we cannot even prophesy and say you will graduate in spite of your courses. I tell you, go to a native doctor in Zaria and see if you will not do something that will change your result and you will graduate. Are you listening to me? A lady who is shouting and saying, no marriage, no marriage, and we are here saying, okay, let's manage the situation. What is the psychological implication? When you were 12, what happened? Look at that nonsense. And you get to a native doctor, as soon as you are entering, he tells you, born on the um, 16th of August, your name is Grace, come and sit down, there's a seat I've prepared for you here, and this pot is boiling, I know you like Stephen, so what else, tell me. And say, Baba, it's true. And you see some of our parents as dignified as they are. See how they become children in the presence of devils because they are desperate for solution. They can come and sit here in church and we'll give them nice seats. But the native doctor will say, enter with your back. And they're entering because they are desperate. So, yes, and the man stands. He said, now sit down. He said, if you turn back and you see your father and your mother, your dignified people, man of God standing and we fold our arms and say you know uh, the Lord appeared to me don't lie to us don't tell us lies again because we need to be seeing the fruit of that appearance stop telling us lies that you saw Jesus and you saw angels because those who saw Jesus and saw angels in the Bible we know what happened to them let me tell you the presence of one angel killed 150,000 people those who chorus I'm seeing angels every minute every second come on am I challenging you tonight I'm shaking off things that the Bible says that David played his harp and something happened to Saul. A spirit left Saul. How many demons and principalities and powers lead the praises and worship in our church? Unaffected by the power of worship. Thank God for the excellence. Thank God for the backdrops. Thank God for everything. Am I challenging you? What is your concept of Christianity? It says, out of him will flow rivers. Rivers. What you see today that you call a blessing and the power of God. Do you know it's just one step out of the cave compared to where God wants to take us to? We insult people and said they have gone to do all kinds of diabolical things. So why don't you help them? 
Satan does not create anything. He only perverts. Can we have a voice that will give us authentic biblical Christianity? Do we have men like that? That you can come to me with no job and you're already smiling when you see me because you are sure that you are going back with a job. Receive, receive, receive. And we're sweating and the protocol runs with a handkerchief. So you're joking. Nonsense. I'm not ashamed to say it. We should be ashamed of ourselves. I'm getting frustrated with all of these things we do and we sugarcoat our Christianity. You know what? God is angry, let me tell you. God is not happy about it. Oh God, give me members. Let Koinonia come and fool and we stand and we look at the many people. But there are people with needs. Real needs. And it's amazing. There are many ministers who are complacent. You just sit down on Sunday. Share one book. I don't care whether you are quoting scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. If it's not helping people to become like Christ and really meeting their needs and breaking, if your gospel is true, Satan should react to it. I don't mean reaction. Satan should oppress you. The people should be free. It says, and ye shall know the truth. How come we teach? We have sessions and sessions of weeks of teaching. And I tell you, demons attend all the sessions. And only certain lower demons just manifest. And we stand as men of God, we are nodding. But you know the real people who have demons. You can't go and meet them because you know the demons won't go out. You know the real people. There are people troubling our fathers and our mothers. We know that if we had, if I gave you power right now, that everyone, every demon you shouted on will go. Some of you will enter bus this night and say, Uncle Sam is leaving my house once and for all. Why are you unable to go? Hallelujah. A minister finishes ministering. And when he finishes, he says, pray for me. I'm expecting a comeback from Satan. What the heck are we saying? Jesus casted out a legion of demons and slept sound. The only reason why they caught him was because he gave himself. They took him to a cliff and he just walked through there. And he said, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. As the Father has sent me, so send I you. That you can stand and look at your sisters and say the error of barrenness, the error of waiting, dying at 24, dying at 25 is over. This is not the issue of man of God. You are coming with an anointing full of the Holy Ghost. This is what I cried and I told God. I said, Lord, if you are not going to take me to this level of Christianity, let me stop ministry. I'm fooling myself. Thank God for all the things that have happened. Thank God for the supernatural supplies and the grace of God. But there is more. There is more. We admire men who have stepped into that dimension or a bit of it. And then we pray all the time and say, the Lord is going to send a revival. How will it come? Is it not going to come through us? Listen, there is a price. But I want you to know that God wants us to pay that price. To enter into that level. Are you listening to me? Because Satan is not sleeping about your case. Satan is nervous about your manifestation and he's not going to rest. And if all we will get up and do is just ba 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 Thank you, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! And demons are watching and say, I wonder how demons look at us. They say, what in the world is going on here? Power! And we shout. Jesus looked at a raging storm. He lifted his hands and said, Shalom, be still. Talk about authority. What manner of man? We struggle for hours with demons. He looked at the money. The demons were begging him. I've never seen a service where we come to and all the demons come to the front and say, please, ministers, before time for sermon, we know we are going out. Can you send us to Shika instead of Giwa? That's what they did for Jesus. 
The demons made advances and said, let's negotiate. We are sure we are going to leave. Nothing will make us stay, but please, just send us to the pigs. And Jesus said, go, go, go. Right now, what we glory in, what we glory in is to call a lady out and then once she's shaking, you just want to prove, look, let me tell you, we are doing things to cover for our laziness and lack of hunger. You just find one yielded lady who is moving and like, now, I'll just touch you with one finger. What the heck is that? There are real sick people. If you are really a miracle worker, do it. Thank God for the growing of small, small legs. But what of the one who doesn't have anything? Can they come for miracle services too? Are they invited? Are they invited? Or are there some... Do you know... Listen, listen. Do you know what it means when blind people, lame people, crippled people sit down and come to our services and we're shouting, what manner of man is Jesus? Then when we get to the place, we made... And immediately they say, he made the blind to walk. You see, entourage. And the man of God is stepping in. Now the man of faith and power. He comes to sit down, waste people's time, makes all kinds of noise, throws a few people on the ground, one migraine here, one cancer, one wheelchair, and the ass is going out. We all boast and clap. Shame on us. You should get up and come. There is a higher realm. Three men shook cities. How many men of God do we have in Zaria and in Nigeria? And yet evil is just thriving as if there are no men of God. When Paul entered a city, demons responded from the headquarters and ran and the three two men paul alone covered asia minor no flight no nothing full of the holy ghost charles g finney these were men that stepped a bit into that realm listen to what charles g finney would do this is what he would do round the city he's walking around while he finishes praying guess what he will do he will just walk out of the city suddenly men will start falling down from everywhere people are just preparing in their factory the power of God hits the people if we have that kind of thing happen in our generation the man who build it Joshua Selman and will say now come and sow sow, sow, sow everything sow let me tell you something the day God will judge the people who are sowing all the time, we, are, we, we just let them package your seed and sow into this anointing. What anointing? It's because the people are so desperate. So the little that is there, they pour themselves to it. But there is a God that sits in heaven and he desires for us to step in to a higher realm. We're going to pray and God will visit you tonight. But I don't know what is your definition of Christianity. There is a dying world out there. Enough of charity. We need miracle workers. Are you listening to me? We need miracle workers. A viper beats the hand of Paul. And Paul just looked at it and shook it. Shook it. Shook it. Lord, take us to these realms. Where did you take Alexander Dewey to? Lord, where did you take William Branham to? Take us to that realm. Take us to that realm. Take us to that realm. Where you will move in a level of glory and grace. A level of power and victory. Otherwise, there is serious mourning that will come to the body because Satan will eat up everything he can eat up. Do you know something? The more you are being challenged and the more we men of God keep lying to you and not causing you to press and we ourselves will not press, let me tell you the danger. The danger is that Satan will have a free ride and a day will come, frustration will come upon the body of Christ. want to be one of the celebrity men of God who is wasting people's time and wasting God's time. I want to be a serious person. I told God that anywhere they invite me for a meeting, I'm going there for serious business. I assure you, if we step into this realm of power, you will know that you are a blessing to the world now. 
your English notwithstanding. All these rubbish things we put as excuses in ministry. Say your lingua franca. Right now we live in a digital age. Let me tell you. If koinonia has just maths, if you are getting the kind of result that will scare you, you how did we used to meet before? Remember? We're meeting where? On the floor. And we have many men of God. You put balloon. You put this. The P, if the PAA has his own cap, this guy has his own cap. Whether we wear bandana, whether we wear cap, whether we wear green, white, green, whether we wear football jerseys, nothing will replace the absence of fire. Nothing. See, the reason why ministries compete, they are only covering for lack of fire, I assure you. No man who has real fire has time for competition. Hallelujah. I want to be that kind of person. I know people who accept God helps them. Their situation is hopeless. I went to Shika one time. I prayed for a lady. I tell you, I, I felt how powerless my prayer was. I hope I'm helping you tonight. I'm the apostle Josh who called. But I'm telling you this. There is a higher realm. And we can either pretend it and continue doing ministry or repent from ministry and step into a life of glory. That's what I want you to encounter. I've repented for ministry since I've repented from it. There is a higher realm. There are many of you that cry in your hostels and you come and just sit down and say, Lord, would you touch me? And we are here laughing. Tell your neighbor, uh huh, uh huh. How does that bring healing? Sit down, sweetie. Satan will keep being attractive until the day the sons of life come out. If I spit on you and your family receives a breakthrough, I assure you, you carry a container and come and say, Josh, where is that anointed saliva? As, as, as smelly as it is. You will say, no matter how fine you are, this is how desperate people are for a miracle. Let it rain. Let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven? Let it rain. Father, let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven? Let it rain. The rain of new levels. Let it rain. listen to me do not think this teaching tonight is for men of God I assure you you will deceive yourself the teaching tonight is not for men of God the teaching tonight is for a generation that is desperate enough that we are saying we are tired of this worship us are you ready to enter the next level of grace full of the Holy Ghost out of your belly out of your words out of this mic let it flow rivers rivers of healing Rivers of blessings, rivers of power, rivers of grace. Let the sick be truly healed. Let the oppressed be truly delivered. Set a new standard. Rise beyond nominal Christianity. Rise beyond average. Yes, you're a man of God, but there is more. Yes, you're a woman of God, but there is more. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Let's travel for a few minutes. Open the floodgates of 
pray, say, Lord, there is more. I am tired of this level. Tired of this level. There is more. I can be a better blessing. I can be a better blessing. Reka tempo koso fregere gerebo. Se fregere gerebo. A generation of power, a generation of miracles, signs, wonders, living careers of the glory, yield that to the spirit, yield that to the spirit, yield that to the spirit that will confront the gates of hell. Confront the gates of hell. The church is that I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. The gates of hell shall not prevail. The gates of glory, greater anointing, more of his presence, more of his presence, there are powers that need to bow, there are situations that need to bow, there are levels we need to step into, hallelujah, I'm going to pray for you, I pray the prayer, and I pray, that tonight there will be a baptism of fire more of the Holy Ghost you need him this is not just the issue of falling down there is urgency we need more of his power more of the Holy Ghost and I tell you listen the power of God will sweep across this place I'm angry in my spirit you must be ignited you must be ignited you must be ignited. I prayed and I told my father, invade the people with your glory. Hallelujah. Listen, I want you to scatter yourselves around as much as you can. We are going to pray and there will be an impartation. No, you will not go back the same. You will not go back the same. Hallelujah. Listen. 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 What will happen tonight is a baptism of fire. The Bible says the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. And fire. He said his word was like fire in my bones. Fire for miracles. Real miracles. Real deliverances. Lift your hands in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray. Holy Ghost, begin to move across the congregation right now in the name of Jesus. Right now, I invoke power. I invoke power. I invoke an anointing. I invoke power. 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 Move across the crowd. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. 
Salas kade baska na kada branda kete katos. Kete branda kada ba katos koto brake te kene kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.